afternoon, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Loud and clear. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, thank you. Let's see. We got Emily. We got David, Jacob, George, Ethan, Leslie, Shana, Corey. Waiting for cameras to turn on for Sandra, Donaldo, Sherry, Patrick, Lester, Tatiana. Tatiana. I remember you, Tatiana. How are you? Hi. How are you? I am well, thank you. There's Lester. Still waiting for Sandra, Donaldo, Patrick, Tracy. And I don't know who one, two, three, four, five, six is. <laughs> I don't have a camera for today. I don't know if that's what, that will be fine. Uh, we need to have your cameras turned on. What's the status with your camera? I have a desktop, so I'm not able to have a camera uh, right now. So it was like just a last minute thing. Yeah, no worries. And that's fine. Can we do me a favor? Your name on the screen is one, two, three, four, five, six. Can you go into Zoom and change it to your first name and last name for me, please? My name is uh, Donaldo, I think. Oh, that's Donaldo. Okay, who's one, two, three, four, five, six? This is me, Clevin. Okay, so you need to tone your microphone down just a little bit. And can you put your name on your screen? I'm trying to. Thank you, you're the man. Sandra Yonks, you were there for a moment. Are you still with us? I'm here. I'm just looking to see how I can get my picture up here. Um, you got to turn your camera on in the lower left-hand corner. There you go, start video. Now I can see you. All right. Very nice to meet you. Okay, Thank so you. Donaldo and Tracy Hall. I'm, I'm here, can anybody hear me? Yep, we can hear yep. you, we just can't see you yet. Okay, I'm working on it. Thank you much. And Tracy, one, two, three, four, five, six, and Donaldo doesn't have his uh, capability. All right, that's awesome. Hey, everybody, welcome to America, not America, <laughs> AO International, New Hire Class 22-014. How many of us has received the email, the day one email? Okay, I have. So you have. That's great. I'm going to send it out again to everybody. Okay. Just so Is it the one with your picture on it? I'm sorry? Is it the one with your picture on it? Yeah, so down at the bottom, there should be, uh, should have been forwarded to you by whoever your folks are, your training folks. How many of us know who our SA is? I just talked to mine. So Emily, you do? So I'll ask each one of you. Emily, do you know who your SA is? American Income. Well, that's the name of the company. Who's your, who recruited you? John. John. I can pull his last name up for you, really? No, that's okay, but you need to know it because you guys are going to fill out a form here shortly, and I want to make sure we know our information. David, do you know who yours is? I was recruited by Joe um, Goyd. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Goyd, right Goyd Joe. Goyd but Joe. I've been working with Will Benline and MJ. Okay. Okay, so you're going to, when you fill out this form, it's going to ask you who your uh, field trainer or SA is. That would be the first person right above you, okay, who's going to be doing okay. the training with you and stuff, all right? That Jacob, would be Will. Will it's, Benline. Jacob, do you know who yours is? Jacob. 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 Hey, this is George. George. You know um, who I got an MGA of Jillian. Jillian Getz, right. So the uh, she's the MGA. Your GA is probably Brennan Behan. Who's the one invited? Oh, you Brennan. Okay. The Brennan. Okay. Okay. Ethan, that's who, you know the, that's who the email's from. Okay. Ethan? Yep. I don't have one that's got your picture on. I just got the uh, right. training schedule. Yep. I'm going to forward that to everybody once okay. we get in. Leslie, do you know who, you, who your SA or field trainer is? Leslie is frozen. Shana, am I pronouncing that right? Shana? Yeah. Who's your yeah, SA? Shana. Ty Morrow. Ty Morrow, okay. Corey? Yep, Amanda Craig. Okay, and Ty Morrow is a uh, MGA, so there's going to be levels below him, all right? Sherry, do you know who your SA is? Paige Schwab. Tatiana, you do, I know. Lester? I believe it's Brennan. Brennan Behan? Brenna. 
Yes. Brenda. That'll work. She's a GA, but that's okay. We'll go with that. Patrick, what about you? I believe mine is Samuel. Ajar? I'm sorry? A-J-A-R? Is that his last name? Uh, I, I think it's a sweet. I know that um, time are. Uh, hey, well, for all of you guys, that's me. I'm the course facilitator, so I'm not your SA. Okay, okay. okay. So it's going to be um, whoever recruited you or sent you the email to attend this meeting. Yeah, it, okay. It, it'll be, I, I think, Ty Morrow then. Ty Morrow. Okay. Devin? Or not Devin. Clevin. Uh, mine should be James Hodge. James Hodge. Okay. And Clevin, we're going to have to fix your uh, I'm camera. I'm trying to right now. Okay. You're the man. Sandra, how about you? Um. Yes. Francisco Perez is my okay. message. Molly? Um, that would be, I assume, Brenda uh, Brihan, or um, yeah. I was recruited by Jillian Getz. Yeah, so you would put Brenna, okay, Brenna Behan. Tracy Hall, how about you? Um, it would be, one second, I just had it. That's okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I guess that's better. From, my email's from Samuel Sweet. Right, I'm Samuel Sweet. I'm the course facilitator, but I am not I'm your SA. That's okay. Joe, it's from Joe. Joe, Joe Bochat? Bo yeah. Bochat. Okay, no worries. Jacob, can we hear you now? No, we cannot. <laughs> Still no audio, Jacob. No worries. Donaldo, who's your SA? Joe Tinai. Ah, Joe Tinai. Awesome. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to do uh, today is we are going to watch a video. And as we watch this video, we're going to learn something about our uh, market, what we do, who we are, and things of that nature, okay? In addition to that, we're going to fill out a form, which is going to be online. So you use your computer to fill it out. And I'm going to send you the link in just a second that has the information for uh, the questions that we ask. It's called a pre-course uh, aptitude assessment or a preliminary aptitude assessment. It's fairly straightforward. And actually I'm gonna uh, share my screen and show you what it looks like. So if you have any questions, we can go through it, okay? So just bear with me one second while I share that screen. There it is. I'm just waiting for it to come up. Okay, so this is a preliminary aptitude assessment. You need your first name, your last name. You put your uh, email, and it's got to be correct because I'm going to email you all the uh, day one uh, correspondence from me. You put in your cell number. You put in your address. Then you enter your class number. Your class number is 22-014. And I'm going to ask you if you have your health or accident license. And do you have life insurance for your family? Yes or no. And practicing script is required. So I want to know who you're going to practice with. And you can pick all of these or just one of these. So family members, friends, or classmates. Um, do you, did you apply with NIPR for your resident license? And if you don't know what that is, that's fine. Just put no. And then did you apply with NIPR for your non-resident license? Down here... You're going to fill in the table uh, according to your assessment of your confidence in these areas. So client engagement, phone calling, using Zoom to present information to others, and sales methodology. If you've never done any type of sales, then you would probably put little to no confidence. If you're confident using Zoom and showing your screen and moving back and forth between stuff, you would put very confident or confident. If you've never done that before, little confidence. Phone calling, that means uh, you've made outbound phone calls to clients uh, and been held accountable for making phone calls. If you've never done that, it's okay. Don't worry about it, but I want you to put little to no confidence. And then client engagement means working with a client, either in a customer service role or in a sales role, okay? And then I want to know, do you have access to these tools, Mobile Planet, HP Pro, and eApp? If you don't know what these are, then you would say, uh, you, you just try to leave it blank, but if not, just hit um, mobile planet. I gotta add one more in there that says none. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yep, absolutely. So I'm gonna stop that. 
I'm going to do a lot of screen sharing throughout this entire process, just so you all know. But what we do every morning for the first five days is we watch a mandatory video that's been prepared by AO at the high level. And in order for you to work in the veterans market, they require that you watch this five times in a row during training. So I get this out of the way every single morning. And then I ask questions about it to see what people were able to, uh, you know, glean from the video to make sure that they're comfortable. Okay. So let me put in the uh, chat the link for your survey. So while you guys are doing that, I am going to play this video. And after it's done, then we'll get back together. I'll introduce myself, tell you a little bit about who I am, and then I'm going to ask for information from you all. Okay. Anybody have any questions with where we're at right now? I have okay. a question. Ah, there we go. Yes, go ahead. 22-014 is the class number? Yes, sir. Thank you. 22-04? Yeah, and we put it in the chat for everybody. Oh, I've been sending it only to... Uh, <laughs> it's 22-014. And there is the... Uh, uh, the login, or not the login, but where, basically where you go to fill out your survey. I have a question that says, what if I pass my exam but do not have a license yet? That's fine. Uh, if you pass your exam, congratulations. I mean, that's the first major step. That's probably why you're in the training. Your license will come from your state, depending upon whether you've paid for the licensing fee and or if you need fingerprints. Once that happens, then I'll walk you through the process by which you um, get your agent number and you get started with us. But yeah, in the meantime, it's okay. If you've passed your license, uh, but you don't have it yet or passed your exam, you can still take this class. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, your name again? Sorry. And then what, yeah. we put that in the training, right? No, not my name does not go in the training. My name is Sam. Right the essay goes through yeah. training. I am the course facilitator. So I have instructors. I have a bunch of folks that come in and teach. I teach the most of it and the preponderance of it. But the name that we're looking for is the person that you're going to work with once the class is over. So in an eight-hour day, four hours are spent with me, and then theoretically four hours are spent with your SA or your field trainer. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the video. And if you have questions at any time, just you know raise your hand. And if you don't know how to do that in Zoom, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, because I can't always see everybody all the time. And if everybody tries to ask questions at once, I will get confused. And I don't mm -hmm. want to do that. I'll help everybody out as much as I can. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch a video. And what I'm going to ask from okay. you, Emily Johnson, is let me know if you just say out loud, only you, if you can see and hear the video once I start playing it. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's share the screen. Let's go there. Boom. And boom. the veteran market module is intended. Audio is available. Sure. Okay. Oh, it went away. What happened to the audio? Can you hear it, Emily? Mm, no. It started off strong and then it disappeared. Number three. How do we market? Yeah. There it goes. Yes. A veteran by statute is defined as a person who served in the active army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, and was discharged as other than dishonorable. Now, there's currently over 20.4 million veterans across the country, making the veteran market almost one and a half times the size of the entire union market that the company began marketing to in the 50s. Our target senior demographic of veterans between the ages of 60 to 75 alone boasts more than 10 million or a little under half of the veteran population. What's more exciting than just the number of veterans that exist is the opportunity to protect each one of those veterans' families and close relations through the sponsorship program provided through AIL. Every veteran, not only in most cases, always knows another veteran, but also may have a brother or a sister or a parent or a friend that they're able to extend their benefits to through AIL as well. You may be asking yourself with that many veterans, well, where are they all located at? Well, in Washington state, there's over 560,000 veterans. In Oregon, there's over 300,000. In California, 
has over 1.6 million, Arizona over 500,000, in Texas over 1.5 million, in Minnesota over 320,000, in Wisconsin over 360,000, Virginia over 720,000, North Carolina over 730,000, Tennessee over 470,000, and that's not even all the territories that we cover and service veterans in. What an incredible opportunity that you have to work in this special market. Now, to put this in perspective for how big your opportunity is, let's take a state like Washington. It has over 560,000 veterans, with 397 of those being between the ages of 20 to 69 or 71%. It would take 25 agents averaging 12 presentations per week or 300 presentations in total. It would take those 25 agents almost 39 years to see every veteran and their family in Washington. Now that's just one state with 25 agents and you have access and the exclusive NAO to the whole country. Now, if that's not opportunity unlimited, I don't know what is. Now let's talk about what they're covered for. Burial in a VA National Cemetery includes an assigned grave site, if space is available, opening and closing of the grave, grave liner for casket remains, headstone or marker, and finally, care at no cost to the family. Now, the easiest way to understand that is everything before the cemetery gate, the veteran and their family is responsible to take care of. If they're buried in a state or national cemetery, the VA will take care of everything past the cemetery gate. Now, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs benefits does not cover all of the funeral or cremation arrangements of honorably discharged veterans. They get up to $300 for a burial allowance if at the time of death, they were entitled to receive a pension. They receive up to $762 for a burial allowance if the death occurs in a VA facility, up to $762 for a burial allowance if their burial in a cemetery is not under U.S. governmental jurisdiction, discharged from active duty because of a disability incurred in the line of duty, or they die in a VA facility, up to $2,000 for service-related deaths, and veterans' caskets are not free unless the death occurs while on active duty. Now, I know if you're like me, you feel the same way that I do. That's just not enough to take care of their funeral or final expenses for them, let alone their families. But that is where you come in. And your ability to complete this training effectively will be crucial to helping and educate and protect our nation's veterans. If you happen to encounter an active duty veteran member or spouse, it's important to know what life insurance they are covered for. It's called SGLI, or Service Members Group Life Insurance. Every active duty member is covered for $400,000 of term life insurance for the period of active duty and for an additional 120 days after separation or release from duty. Now, SGLI can be converted to VGLI, or Veterans Group Life Insurance, for up to the full 400,000 of renewable term life insurance if full-time SGLI was in place when they separated. If the veteran applies for VGLI within 240 days of separating, they don't have to qualify medically. Outside of that, they have a year and 120 days to apply and qualify medically. Otherwise, VGLI is not available to the veteran. Now, please review the module materials to see the details and the rates and coverages for VGLI and so that you can get the facts and utilize them throughout the presentation, which you'll see in later modules. Now that you know what defines a veteran and how many they are and what they're covered for, let's talk about the organizations that support them. The groups that we work with and also service veterans are called VSOs or Veteran Service Organizations. The three major VSOs are the American Legion, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and finally, the AMVETS, totaling over 3.85 million members across the U.S. Now, once you know the structure of one of them, you know the structure for all of them. So we're going to focus on the VFW, which is the second largest of the big three VSOs, with 1.6 million members. Now, the VFW represents combat veterans that had boots on the ground overseas for more than 30 days. Along with the VFW, there's an auxiliary to that organization. Now, these auxiliary members are not actual veterans themselves. And in many cases, they are the wives or husbands, sons or daughters of a veteran. The auxiliary's purpose is to help support and transition veterans back into civilian life once they've separated from service. 
spouses, dependents, and survivors are eligible for a presidential memorial certificate, a burial flag, and surviving spouses and children, they may be eligible for burial in a national cemetery, even if they pre-deceased the veteran. For the most up-to-date figures and numbers, be sure to visit www.cem.va.gov. To give you a better picture of VSOs and their impact, let's check out a video that shows what happened in the VFW organization in recent years. The VFW's 121st year was marked by challenges like none we have seen before, yet we did not falter. The call for help was unrelenting and our members remained determined to serve during a time of great need. On July 24, 2020, Hal Roche II was installed as National Commander-in-Chief during a change of command ceremony at VFW National Headquarters. A U.S. Air Force veteran who served in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Commander Roche understood the value of resolve, resilience, and adapting to the situation at hand. All things he commended BFW members for as they stepped up to help during the COVID-19 crisis. In casting his 2020 vision for veterans, Commander Roche called on each of us to stay committed to the VFW's mission and continue growing membership in the nation's largest combat veterans organization. As the pandemic created or heightened hardships, the VFW found new ways to accomplish that mission. Limited in-person interaction moved more opportunities online through events such as the Facebook Live discussion with U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs officials on resources for veterans facing homelessness and a live virtual chat with Medal of Honor recipient Thomas Payne. We even launched Still Serving, the VFW podcast, as one more way to connect with our communities and highlight critical issues and legislation affecting veterans, service members, and military families worldwide. And we've stayed on top of threats to veterans' benefits, such as the rise of VA claim sharks. These unaccredited companies make unrealistic promises regarding help with VA claims, and they keep a portion of a veteran's disability compensation as payment for assistance that accredited VFW service officers provide at absolutely no charge to the veteran. VFW posts and members also adapted to life in the pandemic by holding virtual events along with safely serving fellow veterans and their communities. At every level of the organization, service and camaraderie have illustrated that the VFW is a lifeline for veterans their families, and communities. Primarily through virtual meetings, the VFW persevered on the front lines of vital legislative battles on Capitol Hill. Nothing stopped us from fighting for education, jobs, health care, and better quality of life for veterans as we made the voices of our members heard. The VFW proposed the Digital GI Bill upgrade to bring VA education services into the 21st century. This would improve veterans' access to timely and accurate processing as they complete an education. We also pushed for more assistance for service-disabled veterans and those facing housing issues, reflecting our desire to see all veterans secure employment and economic opportunities. The VFW advocated for more progress in healthcare for women veterans, including continued needs to eliminate harassment and assault and address a lack of facilities and providers for gender-specific services. The VFW expressed support for HR 344, the Women Veterans Transitional Residence Utilizing Support and Treatment Trust Act, which would identify the need for women-specific drug and alcohol dependency treatment and rehabilitation programs through VA. VFW service officers remain steadfast in their efforts to secure the benefits and compensation America's veterans earned and deserve. Our accredited VFW service officers and VFW National Veterans Service set another fiscal year record, 
recovering more than $9.7 billion in VA disability compensation benefits for nearly 550,000 veterans. One of the most urgent concerns for the VFW was toxic exposures. Men and women who've worn our nation's uniform and served in dangerous environments need the care and benefits America promised. They've sacrificed, but too many have been left to suffer as they waited years or decades for benefits, or worse yet, were denied care. Commander Roche demanded Congress take action during the first ever all virtual testimony before the House and Senate Committees on Veterans Affairs. He provided a plan that would establish an independent commission to identify toxic exposures and environmental hazards, evaluate scientific evidence on health conditions and toxic exposures, and obligate the VA to accept toxic exposure claims for the sake of veteran care, regardless of the cost. Toxic exposure for our troops has been synonymous with service for more than a hundred years. But every time we're faced with it, we act as, it's never, as if it's never happened before. A comprehensive system for taking care of our troops exposed to hazards is long past due. The VFW demands that Congress works in a bipartisan manner with the veteran service organizations to develop a comprehensive solution for toxic exposure. We must create a framework that will take care of all past, present, and future generations of veterans. Again, that is long overdue. Right now, the burden of proof falls too heavily on veterans. A new framework to determine presumptive service connection is necessary. The VFW continues to urge Congress to pass reforms. We emphatically support the comprehensive and overdue support for troops, cost of war act, and the Honoring Our Pact Act currently under consideration. The lives of veterans are at stake. These advocacy efforts reflected the VFW's 2021 priority goals and the legislative battles that must be won for veterans and their families. The VFW provided several artifacts and personal effects to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency as part of its promise to help advance POW MIA missions. B.J. Lawrence, Executive Director, VFW Washington Office, met with DPAA Director Kelly McKay to hand over items from VFW members. Shortly after, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper delivered several of these items to the Vietnamese government as a show of goodwill from the U.S. The VFW Foundation proudly celebrated its 25th anniversary. To mark the occasion, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, presented Resolution 25, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Foundation Day Resolution. VFW Foundation Board Secretary Treasurer and VFW Quartermaster General Deborah Anderson and other representatives attended the virtual meeting to accept the resolution. With the generous support of our wonderful and loyal corporate partners, the VFW made a positive difference for Americans of every generation. Patriotic middle and high school students received more than $208,000 in scholarships and awards as the VFW named the national winners of its 2021 Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen competitions. The VFW hosted its first ever virtual parade of winners live on Facebook. The event, sponsored by Twisted X, recognized all state winners of the Voice of Democracy competition, as well as the national Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen winners. VFW National Commander Al Roche, VFW Auxiliary President Sandy Onsweater, and Twisted X President Kassad Reddy traveled to Rochester, Minnesota to present 2021 National Voice of Democracy winner Erin Grace Stokig with the first place $30,000 T.C. Selman Memorial Scholarship Award. Sponsored by VFW Post 1215 in Rochester and its auxiliary, her winning essay on this year's theme, Is This the Country the Founders Envisioned, inspired us to share in a vision of progress that has passed on to future generations. Today, almost 80% of the U.S. population is eligible to vote, and our union is far more perfect for it. But what about that last 20%? Who is left? The children, your children, because you 
just as the founding fathers and ships full of immigrants before you are tasked with protecting the future. In addition to a college scholarship, the VFW surprised all of the Voice of Democracy state winners when it announced they would also receive a new laptop courtesy of Dell. Also featured during the virtual awards ceremony was the 2021 Patriots Pen first place winner, Wyatt Perkins. Sponsored by VFW Post 4221 in Lake Portland, North Dakota, Perkins was awarded $5,000. He delivered his winning essay on the theme, What is Patriotism to Me? And discussed how he raised donations for a local food pantry to help during the pandemic. 158 student veterans from around the country were named recipients of the VFW's Sport Clips Help a Hero Scholarship for the fall 2020 semester. Another 160 student veterans were awarded scholarships for the spring 2021 semester. Together, these groups received nearly $1.4 million in assistance. In addition, the VFW and Sport Clips Haircuts teamed up for the first ever virtual VFW Sport Clips Help a Hero Walk, offering supporters a new way to engage with the Help a Hero campaign. It was a huge success and raised just over the $1 million goal. To date, $8 million in scholarships have been awarded through this program. The VFW is grateful for Sport Clips' ongoing support for veterans' higher education needs. The pandemic couldn't stop 300 Burger King franchisees from raising critical funds for the VFW's Unmet Needs Program. In the 14th year for the campaign, participating restaurants asked customers to donate to the program with their purchase and help prevent circumstances such as hunger and homelessness. Since 2007, Burger King franchisees have raised more than $6 million for this vital program. To date, Unmet Needs has awarded more than $12 million to nearly 11,000 service members, veterans, and their families since 2004. Ace Hardware collaborated with the VFW again to give away 1 million American flags to honor men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Customers who visited a participating Ace store received a free American flag. A second flag was then donated to a local VFW post to be used for decorating veterans' graves on Memorial Day. The VFW joined forces with Team Red, White, and Blue. This opened the door for organizing more virtual and local opportunities aimed at connecting veterans through physical wellness and social activities. Some things changed due to COVID-19, but the VFW's enduring spirit of service did not. It was on display as members helped fellow veterans and their communities. The Still Serving campaign, which began right before the pandemic, took on deeper significance as it became a vehicle to share the ways veterans rose to the challenges at hand. VFW posts and members conducted buddy checks, food and blood drives, PPE distributions, and much more in the face of this invisible enemy. After a year filled with difficulties, the VFW and its membership emerged stronger than ever. Just as we have for more than a century, we stayed true to our mission, relentlessly fought for veterans to get the benefits they earned and deserved, and brought hope to people across the country. We demonstrated that we never give up and that veterans represent the best of America. We are still serving. We are resilient. And we're proud to say we are the veterans of foreign wars, and no one does more for veterans. Wow, what an amazing organization to partner with on the state level to educate and protect our nation's veterans. Now that you have the understanding of what a veteran is covered for and entitled to, as well as what a veteran service organization's role is, now let's explore the marketing and mailing process. Let's start with AIL's process. The marketing process to a veteran service organization is the same as how unions and other associations are marketed to. An AIL public relations representative will reach out to a VSO's leadership, such as a quartermaster, a state adjutant, or a commander. Once a virtual or in-person meeting is scheduled, an initial explanation of what AIL can offer the group's leadership is presented. 
Once the decision maker is on board, they are presented it to their board and get final approval. Once approved, a contract between the group or what's called a TG is signed and a coverage amount is put in place on all members. A letter and a beneficiary reply card is created and the decision maker's signature is put on the final artwork and letter. Once everything is finalized, the entire membership is mailed. The response cards are received by home office and they are data entered. They are then routed to AO and loaded into our system for you to call on. Now, that marketing process I just described built the company since 1951 and has continued to provide resources to associates to this day. But innovation is what drives AO. And AO partnered with a company called Lead Lab to bolster and support growth. This marketing process takes the best practices of what the company has been doing since 1951 and it applies it to current technology and goes straight to the veterans through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, allowing veterans that don't belong to veteran service organizations to get access to the same benefits. Once a veteran responds uh, to one of the social media platforms for a no-cost burial and will kit for veterans and their families, they are sent two emails. One, a confirmation email, and the other, an email informing them of an agent of American Income Life will be reaching out to them. The amazing part of this marketing process is that all veterans are covered for the same benefits. So whether you see them through a VSO, like the VFW, or you see them through an online response through the Lead Lab, our products and services will always make sense for every veteran family you see. You know, this market is special and unique, and you should want to hold yourself to the highest level of professionalism to give the veterans and the families you service the best possible experience. Your knowledge of veteran issues as well as coverages is so important to connecting with veterans virtually. Now, be sure to watch this video as many times as you need to solidify what you've learned and get... So there we go, our first video of the day. First video we'll have today. Actually, I think it's the only video we'll have today. Anyway, <clears throat> glad that everyone stuck around, at least for the video. That's a great sign. Uh, has everybody, well, let me rephrase that. I know not everybody has filled out the uh, survey, the preliminary assessment. Who has not filled it out? I haven't <laughs> done it yet. Okay, do you need the link again? It was telling me that I would be leaving Zoom. So I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss the video. To fill out the link? Uh, okay, yeah. So let's go ahead and fill that out now. And if you end up leaving the Zoom, just come right back into it, okay? I haven't either. And I still, I need the link also. Sure, no problem whatsoever. I can put that back in there again. There's the link in your chat. As soon as we have everybody fill it out, then I can send the email out to everyone, the first day email, and then we can kind of go through all the information that's contained in there. So while we're waiting for everybody to do that, let me introduce myself so that you all know who I am. Here's my badge. <clears throat> so I am one of the uh, folks here at American Income, specifically with the AO International team. That team is headed up by Mario Hiro. Hopefully at some point next week, we'll be able to get a couple of words from him. Uh, but basically my job in the organization, besides being a producer, is I sit down with new hires and I basically talk about the science of sales. So <clears throat> to have everybody understand what I'm talking about. So in the sales, you have the science and you have the art. The science of sales are the tools, the methodology, the things that you follow consistently day in and day out to ensure you know what you're doing and that you have the best uh, chance for success. Art of sales is more along the line of the nuances that you bring to the table. Okay. So as an example, we'll have a script that we're going to follow. It's very meticulous. 
but you may not have every single word in the script. You may change something. I may change something because of my style, my approach, and in particular, what the client is saying back to me, right? So the art is understanding how you still come back and leverage the science, but the art is done in a way that is very pleasing uh, to the person that you're speaking with on a Zoom call or a presentation or what we call a sit uh, in order to ensure that, that they feel good about what they're doing with us and that they are happy with the stuff that we're providing with the pre-qualified benefits. And then we go through and talk about the actual uh, benefits they potentially could qualify for, you know, they feel good about that. Okay. So my job today and in the next two weeks is really teach you the science, let you know what the art is. And then when you finally are released and you spend time on your teams, they'll continue to refine that art specific to you so that you can be highly successful. By show of hands, how many of us have had a sales role in the past? So a few of us. Okay. By show of hands, how, how many of you understand that this is a sales job? Tracy Hall and Leslie. I don't see hands. Okay, Leslie says yes, and Tracy, where did you go, Tracy? There you are. Okay, you showed a hand. Perfect. Right, so sometimes I get people in this class who are, they're not aware that it's a sales job. And yes, we're taking care of clients, and as you heard, we're taking care of veterans in particular, but it is still a sales job because all of us are going to get paid pursuant to how well we do with the sales activity, okay? So I am a third-generation sales director. Basically, my grandfather did it for Metropolitan Life. My father did it for Allstate. And then I didn't go down that path. I actually spent my time uh, in the army for six years. I got out and then I spent a large amount of my time here in the Silicon Valley in the heart of California, uh, leading sales teams and developing compensation plans and selling at the highest level, large, large teams. And I've gotten to a point where I wanted to teach more than just the sales approach that you find in Silicon Valley. And I went to a, what we call a B2C, a business to consumer model, which is what this is. So, uh, <laughs> pardon me, I'm well-versed. I used to be a little kid in this stall, and I used to drive with my dad on his sales appointments and go in people's homes and have those life insurance conversations. Uh, I didn't want to go down that path when I was young, but now that I'm older, I find that uh, it's pretty rewarding. And I get to work with a bunch of folks like you as well, ensuring that you figure out how to integrate and make a career in doing this. So that's kind of what my background is. Let's chat with a few people while I'm waiting for everyone to finish out their uh, stuff. Let's start with George Harmon. George, tell us a little about yourself. All I'm looking for is kind of, you know, what do you want to get out of the role and what did you do prior to this? And I've muted everybody, so you need to unmute yourself once you start talking. So the first thing in class we're gonna learn is how to use the mute button. <laughs> you can hit the space bar if you're on a Windows machine or you can go down the lower left-hand corner and click on the mute. George, can you hear me? Yes, there. I'm sorry. I was trying to get back because I was trying to fill that form out. Yeah, no um, worries. Um, I've... Um, been in the insurance business off and on since about 2005. I've had a lot of medical issues uh, due to an injury on my back, but now I'm a lot better since I've had a back surgery done. And okay. uh, right now I drive for Uber. And so um, I'm wanting to get back in the insurance business. I want to be able to build a team um, of agents and help a lot of veterans because they don't know what their benefits are. Mm -hmm. I've talked to many in the past and they think the VA is going to pay for everything when they die. And without some kind of documentation to be able to show them, they won't listen. Yep. Totally. And you're going to have the tool sets that you can provide to them that really gives a clear. And that's what I, I, I liked about this because I, when I found out I was working with veterans and that's what I wanted to do because I am a veteran. Perfect. And, well, thank you for your so, service. Um, you're welcome. And um, I just want to be able to make as much money as possible and help as many veterans as possible. And okay. any of the other um, uh, 
what do you call it? Um, connections y'all have with the unions and stuff. Yep. Well, we have quite a bit. Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate that. Shana Northup, how about you? Come on down. Hi, this is actually my first time um, learning any of this. I've worked in the home care industry, servicing seniors or people with disabilities and veterans. So I have a little bit of experience working and engaging with um, clients that are veterans. Well, thank you. I appreciate you joining. How about you, Emily Johnson? Emily Johnson. Emily Johnson. Emily Johnson. This is my first time working in insurance. Have However, you ever held a sales role before? I'm sorry? Have you ever held a sales role before? I have. I used to work retail. So I've worked retail. I have worked in home health. I'm sorry, I have a baby, so I try to keep myself oh, muted. <laughs> so, um, and I was a stay-at-home mom. I actually owned a daycare for a few years. So I've kind of done a little bit of everything. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for joining. I appreciate that. How about you, Corey? <clears throat> Corey Cashman. Yeah, I'm unmuting myself. Sorry. Um, I was, I've done some sales. I was formerly um, a teacher and then a caregiver, mm -hmm. nanny. I tried to start my own business, um, bringing teachers in as caregivers, but then COVID hit, so that kind of crashed. Um, so I'm, I uh, was looking for a job like this that I can work from home and be lucrative and uh, you know, since my brand, I tried to run my brand that didn't work out. I decided to go with a brand that was well known and already going, and that was you guys. So here I am. Um, I've never sold insurance before, but I'm looking forward to it. Hey, awesome. Thank you for joining. I appreciate that. You're Again, welcome. everybody, our class number is 22 014. Uh, David Fulfer. Am I saying that right? Fulfer, David? Yes. I'm real What's excited your... to. Can you all hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm real excited to be here. I um, This is probably my third career change over 30 years. And um, I spent time about 15 years in the ministry serving overseas in Argentina and South America. And the last 10 years, I've been working in packaging in, in the area of digital marketing. With my background in Spanish, I also uh, took care of Spanish-speaking customers, didn't actually close the deals exactly. Well, I, I pretty much did. <laughs> Basically packaged it up and then sent it off to the to the rep and they got the commission. So, <laughs> but, um, okay. so that's been my role in, in that. And uh, growing up, my grandfather was a commander of his local chapter of American Legion. So we were in and out of that pretty much my whole childhood. And, um, gained a huge respect for um, for veterans and service members through that experience. Um, my father was also uh, drafted during the Vietnam War era. Um, so I have a long history of, of uh, veterans in my background. So I'm excited to, to help out and, awesome. uh, you know. Thank, thank you, you I appreciate us. that. I think that's great. Sherry Brecken, did I say that correctly, Sherry? You are one of the very few who say my last name correctly. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, what, what do I want to get out of this role? Well, I, I want to help people. I was a union member for 21 years as a juvenile probation officer, recently retired. So this is a big uh, change for me. Uh, mm -hmm. which I'm really excited about to try and do something different. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the money is uh, very um, attractive. <laughs> yeah, attractive as well. <laughs> yeah. Totally understand. So you've been a union worker for a number of years, you retired, and now you're going to join us. That is awesome. Yes. Sure. Looking forward to it. Lester, Lester, Lester Truff. Did I say it right? Uh, yeah, you're really good at names. You probably uh, have a lot of them, but yeah, trough, like just like the word trough. But uh, um, I believe in insurance. I have it myself, life insurance. Um, I am also a veteran. Um, been working in IT for the last 15, 20 years, and um, always missed that part where I feel like 
I might be helping somebody. And again, as I believe in this uh, and being a veteran, I do look forward to being able to uh, help families in, in situations. So, Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> Looking forward to spending the next two weeks with you. Patrick Rickard or Ricard, how are you? Patrick, you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. No worry, Patrick. We'll come back to you as soon as you get that figured out. Sandra Yount. Yes, thank you for calling on me. And so when I decided to pursue this with American Income, I was looking for something different, just ready for a change. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, you know, success is up to me. And it was kind of exciting to be able to have that opportunity to work from home, set my own schedule, and do as much as I wanted to do and uh, for my success. So I do come from an insurance background with Ooh. auto claims, and then I have done um, some sales support administrative assistant work supporting a, a sales office. So... I do have a little bit of understanding of um, the whole sales industry, and I'm just uh, really excited to get started. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you for joining. Really appreciate that. Look forward to spending the next two weeks with you. Let's see. Let's jump to <clears throat> Clevin Bell. Clevin, how are you doing today? Clevin, the mute button i got you huh. there you go i am surprised you said my name correctly that don't normally happen but uh hmm. i do have formal sales uh as a when i was in my early 20s i actually sold water softeners and made a lot of money selling water softeners for american uh i can't even remember the name but then I went, uh, I got my degree from uh, IT from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So I been doing, I've been, I worked for several companies in, in Michigan uh, doing IT in, integrations. Then I came to Texas, I opened up my own company doing IT in, integrations. Actually, I worked around the country for Hilton Brands. I put in wireless APs for Hilton hotels mm -hmm. i did that for several years until i got into a pretty bad motorcycle accident uh they told me i should have died but unfortunately god wanted me to stay here for some reason so i'm still here i do currently work as a network technician for adt the alarm mm -hmm. company so as soon as i leave here at eight o'clock i'm working eight hours at adt from nine o'clock until six in the morning Holy mackerel, you're a very so, busy guy. Uh, but like the other lady says, you know, after having your own company and and basically when you are a salesman at your own company, because you have to bid and, and sell yourself to companies to get jobs. So, I mean, that's another part of sales I did. But, uh, but since I sell my company, it's just that I just feel like I'm not, I'm working for somebody else to make them rich and mm. I'm ready to do something to work for myself. I want my own achievements to, to match my pay. And but, uh, you're in the right spot, my friend. Plus, if you decide to build a team, uh, you're going to make double the amount of money, if not more. So I think that's really good. Uh, we have the opportunity for you. All right. I'm going to, I can't get to everybody. I apologize for that. But what I want to do is call out these names. If your name is not, if I don't say your name, that means I haven't received your uh, assessment, your aptitude assessment. Okay. <clears throat> George Harmon, Clevin Bell, Sherry, Molly, Shana, Patrick, Sandra, Leslie, Dominique, or Dominic, sorry, Emily, Tyler, Jacob, Papiana, David, Tracy, Corey, Selgi or Selgi, I apologize. Uh, Donaldo and Ethan. 
whose name did I not call? Because there's 22 of us in here. I'm taking up to Lester. Lester. What's going on, Lester? Did you not submit yours? Uh, review answers. Yeah, you oh. got to review answers and then you hit submit. <clears throat> got it. Awesome. Submitted. Perfect. So now I can uh, download all of this and get the email out because we're going to go through that email <clears throat> with everybody. And some of you have already received it. That's great. But I want to make sure that I spend the time with you to go through the email because that's what we're going to be talking to for uh, over the course of two weeks. This is an email that you all should um, keep handy uh, so you can refer back to it if at any point you need to. And I'll probably be talking about various things uh, that are attachments to that email. And if that's the case, then uh, we want to make sure that you have access to it right away. So just give me a second while I'm downloading everybody's email address and we'll kind of go from there. As I'm doing that, does anybody have any questions on the video that you watched? I'm gonna volunteer and say, uh, I'm glad that we get to watch it every day because uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of information there. Yeah, there is a lot. And what I've learned <clears throat> is that if I submit it to you guys five times in a row, we're not gonna do it next week, but five times, You'll, you'll pretty much get the gist of, of everything. You're not going to know everything as much as you would like, but you're going to know a lot. And no, I, I, my, I, mean, I got three uncles and my father are all vets. And I'm just kind of wondering about, do they know about these benefits? Yeah, I, I don't know. Hopefully they do. And if they don't, then you can share it with them, right? So this is a good thing. Let's see here. What's the deal? Okay. I just sent the email out to everyone who submitted their uh, form. So I'm going to wait for uh, Dominic. Am I saying your name right, Dominic? Yes. Okay. Let me know once you get that email, because then I'm going to go through it with everybody. Okay. All right. Oh, Jacob, you, you can hear me. That's fine. Yeah, that's totally fine. I think my mic should work now. I just switched over to phone. There you go. I can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's a pretty big email, <clears throat> so it might take a second to get to you, Dominic. Just let me know. Just I got it. Do you have it? Okay, perfect. Nope. So I'm going to mute everybody, and then I'm going to walk through this email together with you okay so i sent it and there it is and let's make it bigger let's go over here let's go over here i have like four screens just so everybody knows i look at all the time so just gotta bear with me as i'm getting this ready for everybody Okay, we're just waiting for it to come up on my screen and then we'll be good to go. Who have I not called on? Jacob, now that your microphone's working. Then Ethan, Jacob, tell us why you're here and what you were doing previously. Um, I'm, I was here because I heard I would get to help um, people that were in unions and stuff like that. And now that I'm learning that I'm also going to be able to help veterans, I'm excited for that as well. I actually have two grandparents that are uh, retired military. One's from the Air Force and one's from the Army. Um, wow. And uh, but where I came from or what I was doing before this, I've worked a wide range of jobs uh, from being on an ambulance to being in a steel factory to just whatever. And I'm trying to get more to get more out of the um physical labor and get more to a comfortable job that will stop destroying my body okay awesome i appreciate that i people are asking uh corey are you saying you need me to resend the email to you it's not in your email inbox corey is corey here 
I don't see it, Corey. I clicked it and then it just disappeared. I don't know what that means when you say it. it's in your inbox. Did you delete it? I might, I might have had my hands on a different button. Yeah, it's gone. I don't see it anymore. And then Molly, you're saying you dropped it. You dropped what? <laughs> Mike? Oh, yeah, I dropped mine too, I think. <laughs> Sorry. I can't hear you, Molly. I mean, I accidentally left the meeting by accident when I tried oh, you to. Dropped the meeting. Okay, but you got the email from me, right? I'm going, I'm going to check right now. Okay, awesome. Corey? Shaking your head. Does that mean you do not have it? You do not have it. When I click out to go look at something, the screen goes away. So that's why it gets muted again. I do not have it. I, do not. I just looked again. It's not there. Wow, that's really bizarre. Okay, no I, worries. So I'm going to forward it to you. Uh, I didn't but, get it either. Okay, Thank so you. Corey, I'm sorry. What's your, Corey, what is your email address? Corey uh, dot cashman dot uh, AIL at, at gmail.com. So there it is, Corey dot cashman. And I'm sorry, the other person, what's your email address? Um, M. Lancic, so my first initial, then my last name at, at Outlook. Outlo at outlook.com. All right, I just sent it to both of you, so give it a second. It'll take a moment for it to come through, okay? okay so let you. me share my screen <clears throat> so you can at least see what we have going on here, and let me walk through this with everybody else. All right, so uh, Corey, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so here we go. So basically at the top, <clears throat> that's your class number 22-014. There's your login for Zoom in case you guys forget it. 680-525-8412. The passcode is 123456. I am excited for you to join the number one team in the entire organization. So understand how this works. You have Globe Life, <clears throat> where Globe Life is the largest insurance company in the world. Under Globe Life, you have a wholly owned subsidiary called American Income Life. Globe Life sells to everybody. American Income Life focuses strictly on union members, trade associations, and uh, seniors and veterans, okay? Within the American Life, the largest organization, most successful is called AO. And within AO is a, AO International, of which you all are, are now part of. And it is the most successful group within AO itself. So you're on the number one team of the number one team of the number one team. Okay, you've lucked into joining us. And I can guarantee you that if you join any other organization, whether it's within AO, American Income Life, any other insurance company, you're not going to get two weeks of training where the organization leadership has invested time and energy to help prepare you to become insurance agents. When I joined, uh, it was, here's a script, here's some phone numbers and leads, go get it done. That was it. And what I like, uh, so all of you know, is that at the beginning, when I first joined it with my father and grandfather, it was mostly dominated by men. <clears throat> and one of the reasons for that is because I wouldn't be comfortable letting my daughter go into homes of strangers to talk about insurance. Men, I'm not too worried about with women. I would have a concern if it was my daughter. Now, because we uh, use the advent of Zoom and other type uh, video conferencing, you don't need to go into anybody's house. You can do it virtually. And what that means is more and more women are starting to join the organization and they're finding a huge amount of success. So I welcome the fact that we've had some changes in terms of our demographic. We have more women coming in. Uh, Dominic, no, you don't need to submit a new one. I'll make that change for you for the class number. Okay, so here are the expectations. <clears throat> we expect or I expect for you to be on time for each training session. That means five minutes early, because early is to be on time, on time is to be late, and late means you shouldn't have bothered, okay? We need you to be on time. If you can't make it, that's okay too. Just shoot me an email letting me know that because I take attendance every day and that goes out to not just your frontline leadership, but it goes out to the senior leaders of the organization. Your legacy or your legend begins today, right? What you do, how you do it, how you act in class, <clears throat> your professionalism, whether you're being on time for appointments, doing all the homework, practicing a script, all of that will be noted, particularly by me, obviously, as a course facilitator, but then word will get out, right, to everybody else. So your legend starts today. 
I've never had anybody have a bad legend coming out of class. I don't want anybody in this class to be the first. I'm confident everyone's going to do a great job. So we start at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, otherwise known as 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, that's every single day. We start Monday through Friday for two weeks. Okay, every single day for two weeks, we're here together. We expect you to attend every training session for all 10 days. Now, like I said, if you can't make it, either you have family uh, commitments or something came up, I get it. Just shoot me an email, and let me know. At the end of the course, I will ask you in another survey, how many hours did you miss? And one of the things I'm looking at is I'm trying to track <clears throat> over the course of all of the uh, classes that I teach, if somebody missed a certain number of hours, how does that affect their first year's performance, right? So if we get a lot of questions that have to be asked of our essay, et cetera, et cetera, once we get out of this class and we missed half the class, then we probably know that there's some correlation there, okay? Now, if you do miss a uh, training, it potentially could delay your release. How many of us, and let me rephrase it, not how many of us, so let's just go to one person. Let's go to Sandra Young. Has anybody explained to you what, quote unquote, being released means? No, it has not been totally okay. explained. <clears throat> so in the insurance business, here's what happens. You go through your state mandated training. And then once that is complete, you're eligible to take an exam. So every state requires a certain number of hours for you to train. Once your uh, education Vendor verifies you've attended those number of hours, then you're eligible to sit for the exam. Once you take the exam and pass it, now you're licensed as an agent. And what that means is you can join any company like ours, but you're not released until <clears throat> the organization feels that you have enough knowledge that you can speak on not just insurance in general, but on the services and products rather that we provide to clients. So getting released means you have a certain number of things you have to do. You have to go through class. Next week by Thursday, you're going to have to do the entire presentation that we will go over in class every single day. You'll have to give that presentation to one of your leaders, whether it's your field trainer, whether it's your SA, whether it's your GA, MGA, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to give that presentation using Zoom and treat them like a client and walk all the way from the beginning until the end. That grade you're required to get in order uh, to be quote unquote released is 75%. And I'll walk you through all this. It sounds daunting. It really isn't that hard, but you do have to do some studying. You have to do some practicing to make sure you're comfortable and familiar with the script. Once you pass that presentation and the course is finished, AO requires you to submit a video of yourself on Zoom going through the beginning or the introductory sections of the presentation. When those three things happen, then you can be released. And it's up to your field trainer, your SA, and your upline, uh, what I call your hierarchy. It's up to them when you actually get released. I don't make that determination. As a matter of fact, when you take your, when you conduct your presentation, it's called a rubric. When you do your presentation or rubric for someone, you're not gonna do it for me because I'll know you too well and I'll know where everyone's having challenges and whatnot. You're required to do it for your upline. They're the ones who are going to make a decision about whether you pass or not. And it's in their interest that you pass. So no one's in this job to try to make it difficult for you. We want to make it as easy as possible, but there is going to be some commitment of your time to ensure you know how to navigate through the tool sets. Okay, so that's what released means. Being released then means that we can give you leads. That's really what it comes down to. If you wanted to sell somebody that you know today, and you have a license number, you could actually do it. Release just means that the organization feels confident enough that you can do the job that they're going to give you leads that they otherwise would give to some other agent. And from those leads, we will teach you how to make money. We'll teach you how to generate referrals and sponsorships, everything under the sun with that. So that's what being released means. And that's what all of you are striving to get to. And last but not least, all of us have gone through what you've gone through. Every single person in this organization that you talk to will have done what you have done, everyone. So it's in their interest to help you and they will help you. If you have any issues with that, in terms of people helping you, having access to them, you let me know, okay? Please you generate my database. Number, you have my email and you, uh, you can contact me any way possible. I'm sorry, who was that? 
Oh, I said our leads generated by a database. Is it randomly distributed? No, the leads are going to be just so leads come from AO and then they go to the various agencies within AO, of which AO International is the number one. We get the most leads and the best quality leads. And then it gets distributed down to the RGAs, to the MGAs, who then give them to individual people. Okay. The leads are distributed based on the licenses that you have, whether you have um, a license in Texas, for example, or a license in California. If you have that, then you're eligible for leads in those two states. If you're not licensed in Texas, then you shouldn't be getting Texas leads because you can't work them. Leads are refreshed roughly about once a month. So once a month, you can get a new set of leads and or if you're doing very well and you're booking a lot and you're generating a lot of revenue, <clears throat> that you can be eligible to receive even more leads from your upline. You just have to talk to them and ask them and let them know kind of where you're at. The key in getting leads though, is you've got to make phone calls in order to set appointments. And if you're not making the calls, then leadership is probably not going to give you additional leads. And we'll walk through all this math. We'll look at everything throughout the course so that you know what it takes in order to be successful. Okay. Number three, exhibit a positive attitude in class and dress business casual attire. So uh, even though we're in our own house, our own home, our own office, whatever it is, we still need to look professional. We still need to act professional. And of course, this particular uh, class is being recorded and those recordings are available to all of you the very next day. So if we go over something, you can't remember what we talked about, or you want to refresh your memory, it will be up on YouTube for all of us to go to. So that means that we need to be professional and we need to speak and dress uh, appropriately for our audience. Now, after the morning session is complete or the first four hours of your day with me is complete, then I let your upline know that you're available for field training. Field training includes listening to presentations, observing presentations in Zoom, making phone calls, anything that your upline feels that is appropriate for you to do, that's gonna be considered field training. At the end of every day, I can tell you what I think they're gonna have you do, but I leave it to the discretion of your field trainers. Does that make sense? Patrick, does that make sense? I can't hear you if anybody's speaking. It does for me. Thank makes you. Makes sense to me. Yep, makes sense. It does. Okay, I just need to hear one. Yes, I wanna make sure people can still hear me. Okay. <clears throat> the other thing is, uh, complete all your homework when assigned. So you're gonna have homework that's assigned to you. Whether or not you can do it during field training time, I don't expect you to be able to because there's other things you should be doing. Homework needs to be done and delivered back to me via email uh, when I ask for it. So at one point uh, today, not today, I'm sorry, this week, you're gonna have to create a video for me that talks about the opening of uh, the presentation script to a veteran. You're going to record yourself doing it. You can do it <clears throat> with a partner or you can do it by yourself, but you're going to record yourself on Zoom. And then by Saturday night, before you go to sleep, you need to email it to me because the first thing I do on Sunday is I go through all the videos and I provide you feedback. So that's one of the major things that you're going to have to do for homework. Now there's other homework, but nothing as extensive as that. I do have two expectations for you through the class. And those two expectations are as follows. I expect you to make 300 calls or 300 dials by the end of the class. In two weeks, you will have called 300 times. In addition, you'll have to observe 30 presentations. Every morning, starting tomorrow, we fill out what's called a DRB report. That's dials, reached, booked, presentations, and sales. Now, I don't expect any of you to sell anything, but here's what I expect to happen. Dials, the number of times you personally have dialed on leads that were given to you from the upline. So if you make 10 calls to clients today, tomorrow you report 10. If you don't make any calls today, you report zero. Reached means the times you actually talk to somebody who is a client. So dials, the number of times you try to call, Reached the number of times you actually talk to a client. Booked, that's the number of appointments that you booked. So if I call 10 people, I talk to five of them and I got two appointments, it would be 10, five, and two. 10 dials, five reached, 
two book. Okay. The last two are presentations observed or write alongs. And that's if you sit in the zoom class and they tell you, Hey, I'm going to do a presentation for such and such. I want you to observe that counts as a write along slash presentation because you need to watch people do exactly what you're going to learn how to do. So you get familiar with the cadence, you get familiar with the wording, uh, objections, all of that. Okay. So I want you to watch a lot. And then the last one is sales. That's just telling me how many of those presentations that you observe actually resulted in a sale. So if we watch 20 presentations and there's no sales, you don't really watch everything that an agent has to do when they're successful. You watch a lot, but I need to know how many sales. And sales are defined as somebody using DocuSign as an agent to get the signature from a client. So that's the DRB report. Dials, reached, book, presentation, or write-alongs, and sales. Any question about those five things? Nope. Okay. I'm sorry. Did anybody have a question as I was uh, going yeah, through? Yeah. All right. Okay. Hold on one at a time because I can't see you guys. If you raise your hand electronically, then I can see that immediately and I can call on you just so everybody knows. Okay. So who was first? Go ahead. Hi, this is Sandra. So we're going to be making calls later today. Is that how this no. is working? No, not today, <clears throat> because today you're just getting inter introduced. You start okay. recording on it tomorrow. So some people may sit down with their upline and their upline today says, hey, I want you to call based on this script. If that happens, then yeah, you can make a call. I'm not expecting anybody to make calls tonight. If you end up making calls, that's great. Go ahead and report it. So what I'm expecting tomorrow is when the DRB report is filled out, you will have zero for calls. If you have calls, that's fine. But I do expect some of you to watch presentations tonight. Oh, okay. That's okay. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Molly? Um, so I managed to get all the courses taken care of, but my light, I have to wait to get my license. Uh, I, I'm going to work with them to find the specific time to do my license. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, how will that affect my, um, calls and all that stuff? So you're going to work with your upline, right? And your <laughs> upline, your field trainer, your SA or GA, they'll tell you what you need to do. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so I don't have any issue with anybody having to step out to get their license, take their testing, do their fingerprints or whatever. Just know by the end of the course, I expect 300 calls and I expect 30 presentations. For everyone here, <clears throat> 300 calls is what I expect from my team day in and day out from each individual if they have no appointments. Okay, so the fact that I'm expecting 300 from you after the course of two weeks, I don't think that that's unreasonable. And your essays are going to help you do that. Okay. All right. Sandra, did you have another question or are you good now? Because your hand is still up electronically. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank yeah, you. No, no okay. I'm good. <clears throat> After the morning session complete. Oh, yeah. I told you available for. Uh, okay. So every time I release you, uh, let's say I release you at one o'clock, I will tell you that I will let your upline know that you're available at 1 30 and give you time to get a break in there and do whatever. Uh, before your upline thinks that you're going to be available, just so you know, right? Now, you can join your upline anytime you want um, because you're not with me. I hope that you join your upline, but what I really want more than anything else is communication. Every single day, you should be talking to your upline. And when I say your upline, it's because I don't know if all of you have essays or if you're working with GAs or MGAs. All I do know is that there should be somebody in your hierarchy that's responsible for you that when our time is over each day, you're spending time with them. I hope that makes sense to everybody. George, do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, two, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get to this raise your hand thing on here. I'm not very tech savvy with Zoom. And the other is I'm not tech savvy about how you record on Zoom. So are you going to show us that? Yeah, I'll show you that. I'm not going to, okay. I don't need to show you now because you don't have to do it now, but before, 
you before that day is over that you have to do the recording i'll make sure everyone knows how to record on zoom all right as Thank far you. as putting your hand up uh i believe uh is it reaction no is it recognized hand gestures or is it reactions it's reactions reactions uh, okay. you can raise your hand if okay. you click on you see where it says yeah raise I see it now. go ahead and click on it. it let's make sure it works there you go. So now you, because what happens when you raise your hand that way, you go to the top of my screen, which I can only see okay. one of you. And then I know uh, that you're there. Thanks, okay. sir. Yep, absolutely. All right. The next thing here is please ask questions. Don't be afraid to speak up. <clears throat> I want everybody to ask questions because there's no way in heck that everybody in this class knows everything that I need to teach them. And there's no way for me to read your mind and know if you understood what I was talking about or if I slurred my words or I muttered or whatever the case is. I want you to tell me if you need assistance or if you need me to repeat anything or to elaborate on anything. Okay. I enjoy this job. I love talking with people and I want to make sure that when we're done with our time together, that you're as fully prepared as I think you could be to begin your career working with AO International. Okay. Now, these are all these documents that I have. So first and foremost, let's talk about the websites that you need during training. HP Pro 3.0. HP Pro is the number one tool that we use day in and day out. So there's three tools that we use to do this job. HP Pro is the first one. Mobile Plan is the second one. And eApp is the third one besides Zoom. Okay. We will go through each one of those. One of the things you need to do is make sure you have access to the various tools. I understand if you don't. <clears throat> Uh, that's okay. We'll figure that out together. But as far as uh, HP Pro goes, you need to work with your upline to make sure you have access to that tool. Whether you use their login or not, it's entirely up to them. But you need to be able to get into that tool every day. Second thing is Planet Alting. We're going to look at that together. Actually, let me show you. This is HP Pro. When I click on this link, it shows up over here. And that's the login. So you should be able to log in. Usually it's first name, last name. Then you put in your password. And when you do that, it comes up to this screen here. And that login that I just use, it's the same login that would you, you would use for Planet. Planet Altic. So we're, I'm here. The next one is Planet Altic. If I click on that, then it looks like this. So over here was HP Pro, here's this one, this is Planet, and I'm using the exact same login that I use for HP Pro, okay? And when I log in, it should look like this. That's your uh, splash screen, or that's the first screen that you get to, and then all these graphics will show up for us. So that's HP Pro, that's your Planet Altig. In addition to that, you have something called mPlanet Alting. And again, you use the same login that you use for the other two. And when it comes up, it looks like this. So this has your schedule, your leads, and we're going to go through all of this. What I'm most concerned about is that you have access to... Uh, Planet Alting, which looks like that, and you have access to HP Pro that looks like this when you first log in. If you do not have access to those, uh, you need to let your upline know. I would send them a text right now, or I'd send them an email saying, hey, I tried to log in and I can't, or I don't know how to log in or whatever, because they're the ones that can fix it. I can't fix that access for you. Okay, get it. But if has any questions, please raise your hand electronically for me. Okay, so those are those two websites. Then you have the veteran market training, uh, but we're going through that here. You have the HP Pro veteran market module. Again, we're going through that here. I'll come to those when it's appropriate. You have the agent resource center. This is gonna be where you would go to get a lot of information once you're released as an agent. We'll go through that. You have the veteran market inter uh, introduction and overview, which we just did. And then we're going to have a um, presentation 
of a presentation. So we're going to see the director of PR actually do a presentation live, not live, but recorded with a couple going through everything. We'll look at that after we've done it ourselves. So we know what a good one looks like. We have the AO Pro Shop. So if you wanted, um, what's the best way to put it? If you want gear, like you want to get a polo shirt or something like that, that has the brand on that, you can do that here. So if I click on this, uh, see the brand here, you got cottons for uh, the men, the women, you've got polos, you've got all this stuff. That, and no one's requiring you to buy any of this, by the way. We're just letting you know if you wanted to do that and wear it during your presentation. Obviously, it helps build credibility. Uh, I don't wear one because I've never bought one. So it doesn't mean you have to do it. It just means it's available to you if you would like to do that. If you uh, want to get information about Globe Life, I'm sorry, the Globe Life store, you can click on that. And then that's our parent company, and that's all Globe Life gear. So remember, we're American International. We're a wholly owned subsidiary of Globe Life. And the logo for Globe Life is this little picture of the earth there. Then you have uh, the AO badge. Everybody should click on that and order their badge because you are required to show a badge, just like I did when I first said, hey, my name is Sam. Oh, here we go. Here's my badge. All right, so there's my picture on there. And all of you would do the USID badge with a lanyard, and then you would place an order. So that makes sense to everybody. George, does that make sense to you? Yes, sir, it does. Okay, awesome. Then you have, these two things here are the National Cemetery contact information and the information regarding burial benefits. I want you all to go there on your own time, take a look at it. We give you a lot of information, but we can't possibly give you everything there is to know about the benefits that are available to veterans coming from the VA. It's very helpful if you educate yourself on those things. And so when you talk to a veteran or you get a question, you're able to answer it because then you're building your credibility with that veteran. So that makes sense to everybody. All right. Then you have creating your email signature. I don't have emails from any of you, but at some point you're all going to send me an email and I'm going to look at your email signatures and make sure that they're aligned appropriately with the expectations of sending, uh, you know, professional correspondence. Usually uh, what I want to see is something like this down here. So you have your picture, uh, your name, phone number, contact information. For me, I have my picture, and then if you click on Upgrade Your Career, <clears throat> you can get a bunch of recruiting information that I put together for folks who want to join my team, potentially, or join American Income. And then here, I have scheduled time with me. <clears throat> um, I included this. You guys don't have to, but when somebody clicks on this, what ends up happening is you come to this page right here, which is Calendly which is what I use to book all of my appointments, whether I'm doing training for a one-on-one -on -one or whether I'm talking to any one of our markets or if somebody wants to be recruited or a policy owner has a question. And all of these things are tied to my calendar so that I can't be double booked or overbooked or anything like that. You don't have to do this, but I can tell you it makes your life a lot easier once you're rolling and you've got a lot of appointments because one of the things that this tool does is it allows you to set up rules or like I've set up rules that once I have someone book an appointment, it will send them an email the day before, it'll send them a text four hours before, and then it will send them a final text 30 minutes before the meeting. So I don't have to make calls to remind people that, hey, we're meeting because you're gonna find that a lot of times people don't show up because they forget or whatever the case may be. This tool helps ensure that uh, they're getting notified that there's a meeting coming up. All right, training course materials. So in here, you have the, all these attachments, okay? The first one is the AO International New Agent Packet. So let's have everybody open that up, please, on your computer. And I will open it up as well so that we can see it and kind of go through it together. So this is what it should look like on your computer. And let me go down to height and let me turn off uh, that tool. Okay, so the AO International Packet, it starts with the table of contents. <clears throat> this packet is what we're going to use every single day, and we'll go through this every day. 
So it has important contact information, agent supply list. So this is basically a table of contents. In here, you got all your important contacts, everybody who's an MGA or above in the organization. So you got Mario Hiro, who's the leader of the organization. You got Mark Dushai, you got Ari Hiro, Enzo, Ashley Russ, Claudio, Joseph, Jillian, Ty, and Eddie Leon. <clears throat> and then you got me as the training facilitator. If you have any questions when you're working with clients and you don't know the answer, you need to call corporate or the home office, there's the 800 number there. And then there's help there if you have a problem with one of your uh, tools or something doesn't work in terms of access. Yes, George. I need you to unmute, George. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you open this up? Uh, when you change the page to open this, I don't have the link to click on. Where were the links? The links are in the email. E okay. You All just right. got to go to your email. There'll be attachments. Okay. They'll click right. on the new agent packet. So the agent supply list, we talked about the AO badge you're going to need to order. We want to make sure your laptop and charger are set up in a particular way. Uh, your manager, your, your, SA or your field trainer will help you on that. Business cards, we're going to look at that, what business cards are needed. Again, you're all independent contractors, so we're not going to give you anything as a corporation. We're going to help you obtain all of the stuff for you, but they need to be aligned with the expectations of the organization. Virtual presentation documents, I'm going to give you all of those. Virtual post-sale documents, I give you that as well. The Zoom package, uh, we're going to go through that together so that regardless of where you're at or what level of Zoom that you have, we'll talk about what you could possibly do in the future and what you need to do from a minimum experience for your clients and when you get started. If you're going to get a non-resident license in a particular state, you want to make sure you let your manager know what state you want because the only way that the drop-down works in EAP or the only way you can write an actual policy for somebody is if your upline has licenses in those states as well. So I'm licensed in a number of states, but if I picked a state, let's say Vermont, and my upline doesn't have a Vermont license, then I am not going to get my dropdown in EAP to be able to write a policy in Vermont. <clears throat> and the reason for that is that your upline has to have their licenses in the states that you want to write business in because their compensation is tied to what you do. They don't take anything from you in terms of comp, but they do get uh, commissions and bonuses and things like that based on how much you write. So we need to make sure that wherever state you're writing in, that they actually have a license in that state as well. We'll go through the auto trial and decline sheets. We'll go through a rate book. We'll go through uh, office supplies, things that you may need in order to be successful. We'll look at your work email, and then we're going to go through all the scripts. We're going to learn all that stuff together, okay? So the training, training breakdown, this is day one. This is all we're doing today. We're going to go through expectations meeting, which is what we're doing. We're going to go through the training introduction, which we did to a certain extent. We're going to do the aptitude assessment, which I, everyone did, so thank you very much. We're going to talk about the market a little bit more. And then uh, we're gonna go through a little bit more information and then we're gonna let you go. And what we expect you guys to do right here is <clears throat> work on the presentations, practice presentations and or the scripts and do ride alongs on Zoom. Don't expect anybody to make phone calls today. Doesn't mean that you can't, I'm not telling you not to, I'm just saying I'm not expecting you to. One of the reasons I don't expect you is I don't think that the FAs are gonna be ready for you, the field trainers. I don't think they're going to be ready for you to actually make phone calls for them. Any questions so far? If you do, please raise your hand. None? Okay. So let's talk about experience and mindset. So we're talking about a positive mental attitude, right? The mindset is probably the most important part of this job. You have to want to be successful. You, want, you have to want to do well in order to ensure you get everything done that you need to do. And you can't let things like um, people hanging up on you, <clears throat> presentations that go sideways, you can't let that get to you into the next phone call or the next presentation. And the reason for that is simply because that person you're talking to has no idea how the rest of your day went. None. 
They don't know if you sold $10,000 today or if you haven't sold a dollar in the last month. They have no idea. So you need to treat everybody as an individual and everybody needs to receive your positive mental attitude. Okay. Talked a little bit about attitude, attire, and professionalism. We want to make sure that we're speaking in a way that's concise, that's clear. We don't want to badmouth any other insurance organization because we don't replace anybody's insurance. What we do is complementary. So we can add to anybody's uh, insurance they have with anybody else. So we always speak positive of everybody that uh, has sold insurance in the past to make sure that we're giving that client the best possible positivity during our interactions. Uh, let's see, group me. Uh, does anybody not know what group me is? So everybody knows what group me is. That's awesome. Wait, I don't know what group me is. <laughs> Shana, thank you. You don't know what group me is. So it's a communication. I, I don't either. I'm sorry. I couldn't unmute because my dog was barking. <laughs> <laughs> and right on cue. So group me looks like this. It's a communication tool. It doesn't cost anything. You just download it. <clears throat> and what happens is you have all of these chats. These are individual chats I have. These are... <clears throat> Um, part of group chats. So a or AO International right there has a group chat. So if I go back in time, I can see all the messages that people put in here. And the number one thing you're required to put into group me is anytime you sell something, you put in how much ALP you got and how many referrals. And, and you guys don't have to write this down. This right here, you don't have to do until you're released or until you're done with the course. I'm just showing you the way by which we communicate as a team and then the way that we communicate uh, within our hierarchies. <clears throat> so does anybody here have Eddie Leon? Eddie Leon is a MGA. He has his own group. Uh, we've got uh, Ari and uh, Jillian. They're under our, uh, Mario. They have their own group here. Uh, Jillian has her own group. If anybody is under Jillian's hierarchy right here. And you can see the type of stuff that we put in here, right? Just a lot of information, a lot of support. Hey, you're doing a great job. This is also a way by which leadership, if they need to get a message out to everybody all at once, rather than trying to call or send an email, they send everything in chat, right, through GroupMe. So we expect everybody to be on GroupMe uh, every single day. And you should have that GroupMe on your phone as well as on your computer. So that way you can get all the information about what's going on. So we- I'm sorry, up. just for clarification, it's group, G-R-O-U-P, M-E. M-E. Okay, thank you. E. Yep, absolutely. And if you don't have it and you need to get it and let your upline know, and not only will they help you get it, but they'll also make sure you're part of all these various groups. I'm going to set up a specific group called uh, AO Class 22-014. All of you will be part of it, and I can send messages out to each one of you. So make sure you Download the GroupMe app onto your computer and onto your cell phone. Any other questions about GroupMe? Yeah, the plus one is the references or in our case, sponsors or sponsorships. So if I said, hey, uh, 2000 ALP plus two, that means I got two sponsorships as well. Okay. All right, so that's the group me. Let's talk about Team Zoom. So all of us are on a training Zoom now, right? And you're talking with the facilitator for the new hire class. When you go to work with your teams, they'll have what's called a Team Zoom. And in that Team Zoom, there'll probably be a lot of rooms in there. So I belong to a team and I have my own office or my own room in one of those teams. And my team that I meet with can meet in that room or if I'm going to do one-on-ones with people, they can meet in that room. For all of us, uh, when we're done here, we're going to go to a group Zoom, whatever hierarchy that you have, your SA or your field trainer should tell you what the login is. You'll join that because that's where ultimately you would observe people doing presentations. You would uh, make dials from that Zoom room, all of that good stuff. Okay. So that's what the team Zoom is. Uh, schedule. My schedule personally runs from... 8.30 in the morning Pacific Daylight Time till 8 o'clock at night Pacific Daylight Time. 
Uh, for some of us on the East Coast, you guys are definitely running 12 to 8. On the West Coast, it's 9 to 6 and potentially later. It depends on what your FA or I'm sorry, your field training or SA wants you to do. Okay. I know you're with me for four hours starting at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time till at least one o'clock. Sometimes I might keep you a little bit later depending upon where we're at in the process, but at least four hours a day. Okay. Daily communication with me and daily communication with your upline. <clears throat> daily communication with me is if you can't make it, you send me an email. If anything is going on, you can shoot me an email. Uh, anything you want to talk to me about, you can uh, shoot me an email. You can give me a call, leave me a text, and we'll find some time that we can chat. And that happens when people are frustrated. They're not getting as much access to their upline as they would like. Maybe they can't access a tool, anything like that. Send it to me personally, and we'll take it offline, and we'll figure it out together, all right? Uh, and then in class, I expect everybody to participate and communicate. So that's the stuff with me and with the class. Then with your upline, there is the expectation <clears throat> that you're going to communicate with them every single day. Uh, what I don't want to see happen is you send one text, and you never got a response, and so you never talk to them, okay? I never want to see that happen in a day. You all are committed, you're showing up. A lot of you have your license, a lot of you are getting your license. Our job as a leadership is to make sure we're giving you every advantage to succeed. Part of that is making sure that we're training you both from a course and classroom perspective, as well as in the field. So if you aren't able to get a hold of your upline, you can contact me, okay? Just so everyone knows that you can get a hold of me and I will help you. I will do whatever we have to do to make sure you're getting access and information. Because I, I talk to all the uplines, have access to all their stuff. I can put you into anybody else's Zoom room so you can observe presentations. But I'm fully expecting that your upline is going to take care of you 100%. Uh, some will, some won't. Some will, some won't. So what? And this is sales role. <clears throat> some people will buy some people will have an appointment. Some people won't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you sell every single time or if you don't sell 10 times in a row. Every next engagement starts over again. So we're not making steaks here. We're making hamburgers. So what that means is we have a very uh, tried and true method by which we sell. It's worked for a very long time and it's going to work for you. You just have to keep doing it and keep at it. And as you refine your craft, you're going to get better and better at it and you'll continue to make more and more money. So don't worry about the people who don't buy or worry about the people who won't provide you references or sponsorships. Don't worry about it. You do what you can, you follow through, and then you go to the next one, right? So again, some will, some won't. So what? Our vision and mission. Can anybody tell you what the mission and vision is of American income? If they did, I don't remember. Okay, no worries. Anybody else, can you tell me what the mission and vision is? Anybody? Nobody? Has anybody gone to the AIL website? When I first started. Yeah. So this is AI. This is AI life, right? <clears throat> and you guys should bookmark this because uh, your clients are probably going to go here at some point. Whoops. Well, it's not on that website. I had it up. What is it? It is this one right here. So AILife.com. Insurance, it's for them, not for you, right? Here's our products. Here's a little bit about AIL. So if you were to go to this website, or I'm sorry, go to this location right here and click on about us, this is kind of what we do and who we are. Here's our philosophy, right? We advocate for key issues and campaigns and invest in the public agenda. We contribute to various organizations that research, analyze, and propose solutions on fair trade, good jobs, environmental sustainability, electing fair-minded candidates. We defend workers' rights. We advocate for financial reform. And we champion for a fair economy. We offer portable, permanent, <clears throat> pardon me, portable life insurance. And we support 
independent agency visit, <clears throat> pardon me, thousands of uh, families every single year, right? This is who we are. This is what we do. We protect all working families. We've done it since 1951. So if anybody asks who you work for, <clears throat> what do you do? You can point to this page right here. So AILLife.com forward slash about. <clears throat> but that's not our mission. <clears throat> Pardon me. That's kind of what we do. Somebody spend the time and at some point today, tell me what our mission is. Because you'll find it if you search for it on this webpage. Okay? Or in AILLife.com, somewhere on there. Okay, so no agent left behind. This is a personal philosophy of mine. I firmly believe that all of us can become a good agent or become an agent to whatever level that we feel comfortable doing. I don't want to leave anybody behind. There is nothing in here that is so complex and so overwhelming that all of us can't do it. Guys, I can do this. <laughs> and trust me, if I can do this, all of you can do this, okay? Uh, by a show of hands physically, how many of us actually have their license? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tracy, are you there? Tracy Hall? Yes, 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 I'm here. Uh, oh, I, I uh, completed my exam last night at midnight. Oh, awesome. So, what the results are yet. Okay, well, hopefully you passed. It's good that I passed, but I don't okay. know for sure. Gotcha. Is, is your camera working, Tracy? Yes, it is working. I just uploaded that profile picture on the uh, on the um, other mm -hmm. app we were talking about. Okay, perfect. All right, so no agent left behind. Here's how I see it. <clears throat> One of the jobs that I have besides talking about the science and art of sales and then teaching specifically the science is I want to shift commitment to affirmation. I want you all to become a believer in what we're doing. And your commitment, I see already, is that either you have your license, you're about to get your license, and you're attending this course. That is your commitment to me that I've seen already. So that's great. Now I want to shift that commitment and make it even stronger and build it into affirmation and become a true believer. If you're here to make a lot of money, you, you can do that it'll happen. If you're here to take care of a lot of families that are veterans and that is your goal, you can do that. If you want to build your team and do what I do, which is train and teach others so they can make a good amount of uh, a great living working remotely, you can do that too. But keep in mind that once you've made a commitment, I don't want to leave you behind for any reason. Whether you get frustrated, whether you get overwhelmed, I'm here as part counselor to chat with. And if this or have you chat with other people who've been in the exact same position as you have, who was frustrated with their previous job? Me. <laughs> and I got good here tonight. <laughs> okay. We know you every night. I hear you. So we're going to take care of it. Emily, what frustrated you about your job? I worked for my dad. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's, let's, Let's let's pick someone else. On it. <laughs> I did DOT. Corey, you were frustrated. DOT were you... are really hard. <laughs> Corey? Um, my frustration was um, I got the business going and then COVID hit and kind of smashed it because then there was all those health department things and we just couldn't we just couldn't run after that. Yeah, I was I doing good I... and I was really excited. I thought we were we we're going somewhere and then mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I understand completely how you feel. A lot of folks that I've trained uh, felt the same way that you did. And what they found is after getting through the course and getting a toehold, uh, that those frustrations were in the past. Those frustrations, like, that's what I used to do, and now I can do this. So you're going to be in the exact same boat, and you won't be frustrated with this over time. You may be frustrated with the number of people that you chat with or the people who don't answer your calls or people missing appointments or don't buy but like i said move that behind you and if you start looking at what you're doing here and how much money you're going to make and the quality of life that you're going to have that frustration will be something of the past sherry i'm so sorry did you have a question no i just wanted to say that um i i too was frustrated with my prior job mm -hmm. um and that is only because i worked for alaska state government and um 
it was very frustrating that our mission statement um, to help victims and families and um, restore um, you know, juvenile offenders was mm -hmm. not being met because of the systems that were in place. So um, that is why I just went ahead and retired. Gotcha, okay. So I see Corey <clears throat> put up that our mission is to help working class families achieve financial protection from adverse circumstances. Where'd you find that, Corey? I found it too. I looked up, I asked my phone, I asked Google. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I expect from all of you. If you don't see it on the page, Google is your best friend when it comes to virtually anything, right? Yep. Your best friend. Yes, sir. So Tatiana, the last class that you went through, that was with Mike Connor, right? <clears throat> I have no idea who Mike is. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm sorry. The last class that you went through, was that with Mike Connor? What do you mean? Like the, the facilitator? Hmm, yes. It was you. It was me? Okay. Yeah. I've you now, so I don't remember. Uh, did I talk about shifting commitment to affirmation? You did. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm glad that you're back. That's awesome. Uh, and hopefully we'll get through it all together this time, okay? Of course. I don't, did you introduce yourself to the class? I did not. Please do so. Okay. Um, I am Tatiana. Um, I live in Alabama. Um, I've been trying to get into insurance for a little while, but there was no one that I really cared to work for uh, mm -hmm. necessarily. Um, it was really nice that I found AO and that they work with veterans. Uh, my dad was a veteran and he died overseas. And so, um, so yeah, this, this definitely means a lot to me. I lot, got a lot of veterans in my family. So I'm just really happy to be here and hopefully I'll get through it this time. <laughs> well, I'll work with you to <clears throat> whatever we need to do to help you get through it. So first of all, I'm sorry for your loss. And we all thank your father for his service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Anybody yeah. else that has not introduced themselves yet? Leslie, did you introduce yourself? I have not. Please Am I still so. lagging and frozen? You're lagging, but that's okay. We'll work with it. Okay. Well, my name is Leslie and I live in Tennessee and I currently work for Baptist Rehab Hospital on the stroke unit. Um, we are severely understaffed and underpaid and uh, therefore I am uh, frustrated with my job as well. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, working remotely. Um, I also have uh, veterans in my family. My grandfather was a veteran of the uh, World War II. He was a B-25 bomber pilot. And my grandmother was a military nurse and she was captured by German soldiers and he rescued her. And that is how they met them. Wow. Now that's a story. That is awesome. That is, that is so cool. It could literally be a movie. Absolutely. Well, thank both your parents for their service to our country. That is a great story. Okay. Uh, if you have not introduced yourself, please electronically raise your hand. That way I don't have to ask everybody if they've introduced themselves and I'll just pick who's up. All right. Now we're going to give this a shot. <clears throat> I'm ready. Selgi. Nope, Selji. Yes, there you go, Selji. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Selji, for butchering your name. Please tell us a okay. little bit about you and why you're here. Um, well, I have been in sales my whole life. Um, most recently, I was a real estate agent in Portland, Oregon for a year during COVID. Um, that was pretty intense. Mm -hmm. um, I have since relocated to Montana, so I just thought it was uh, going to be a, much harder to go through the whole real estate process all over again in a new state. And so I just decided to find something different. Um, also something that would allow me to stay home with my little one. Um, mm -hmm. And I think this is definitely the perfect fit uh, for what I need in my life for the kind of objective that I'm trying to reach. I have always loved uh, growing my own business um, after getting really tired of growing other people's business and making them a lot of money. I decided that I am going to focus on my own. So um, I'm very excited to learn about a new audience of um, 
talking with veterans. I've, I've never been able to, they are the most interesting people. So I'm really excited to, to get to uh, know them and have them be my, my major target audience. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about learning everything with AO. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. Um, Molly. Um, yeah, um, so my story is, yes, I have been with real, uh, not real estate, I was thinking of that, but, um, uh, I've been in sales, um, various sales regarding retail, and then I also did, a, was assistant manager of a thrift store, and that was always fun but um I wanted since I was moving I was um and officially has have been moved um I wanted to try something different and I picked insurance okay well awesome thanks for joining us appreciate it Tyler Nelson see I think I can get that name absolutely right Tyler I, I had hoped that you could get that name. Um, previous to this, I guess, I was a UPS driver through the pandemic. Um, more specifically, my route was the airport route in Minneapolis here. And uh, I also covered the bases and the VA. So that was really nice developing those connections with them. They're all a bunch of screwballs on the bases, I can tell you that right now. Um, prior to that, though, I really didn't have a lot of sales experience, I guess. Uh, I worked as a traffic control manager for u-haul so i was the guy that would call you and say i'm sorry your 26 foot truck is 100 miles that way <laughs> would you like to pick that up i was the bad guy with that um and i guess really why i wanted to get into insurance more so was because i enjoyed the communication one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and uh i'm leaving ups because of a back injury and you know the pandemic really wore me out. So I guess out of that, I mean, I really am excited to get one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with people again, actually get communicating with them again that way. Uh, I guess that's my story. Awesome. Patrick, what about you? Nope. Can you hear us, Patrick? Okay, we cannot hear you. <clears throat> that's okay, Ethan. Hey, I'm Ethan. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, thank you to all the veterans. Thank you for your service. Um, I'm excited to kind of go down this road with everybody. And I've got about 10 years experience. Uh, my background is really in product management and product development. But my mm -hmm. favorite part about that job was I led the sales meetings uh, with Walmart, Best Buy, Target, Apple, uh, these major retailers kind of um, selling the product that I worked months or sometimes years developing. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that wasn't a sales role, but that was sort of the, uh, the icing on the cake when, when you were done with a major project was making sure you found retailers that would put it on their shelves. Um, otherwise, I was, into, I was insurance adjacent in my last role uh, at a company called Assurion, which does handset and tablet protection. Yep, if you've got that. Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and you have insurance on your phone, we were, we were the ones um, sending you new ones when you broke them. So this was like not a total jump um, to move into this to this arena, but yep, nice to meet meet everybody. Awesome, thank you, Ethan. Appreciate it, Donaldo. All right, so sorry about my camera. Tomorrow, y'all going to be able to see me. Um, I've been in sales for about two years. I I'm a former loan officer. I used to to work with the VAs. I used to work with a lot of people refinancing their houses. Um, and the time of the pandemic. So I'm very excited to join AO actually. I heard a lot of great things about it. I'm very excited uh, to build a team and uh, go on with my career. Excellent, well, appreciate you joining and I'm confident that you're gonna do well here. We're gonna take a break right now. It's 11 o'clock my time on the West Coast. We'll take a break until 11.10 and bring everybody back. So we'll see you in 10 minutes. Thanks. All right. Let's get those cameras turned back on. Let's get everybody back into the program. 
Well, this is fascinating to see. Why is that not showing up there? Let's go here. That didn't work. Okay, awesome. We got everyone back. Going for George, Tracy. There's Tracy, Tatiana, and Donaldo is out. We know that. I'm here. Camera. No, I know you're out from a camera perspective. Are you getting a camera to put onto your computer at some point? Yes, of course. Tomorrow I'm going to be with the camera. Okay, awesome. Just checking. Thank sure. you. <clears throat> so as we go through this process, everybody, every single day I assess two things. I assess what I've sold to you and I assess what you've sold to me. And then I ask you about it because I want to see if your assessment aligns with my assessment. So this is a sales engagement. My job is to sell you on something every single day, whether I intend to or not, right? So looking at me, Sandra Yount, what am I selling you? Not about what we talked about today, just looking at my picture, looking at my Zoom, what am I selling you? Well, from appearance, you give a very professional demeanor. I mean, you sort of the meeting with a jacket on and you're very clear and concise with your explanations of things. So you're selling to me a level of professionalism okay. with the company. That's fair. Thank you. What did I sell you today so far, Shana, based on what you see? I would say the same professionalism and that um, this is a team thing that you're supportive and here for our success. success. Okay, that's fair. <clears throat> so now let's move away from the visual. And let's talk about what I've discussed so far. Sherry, what have I sold you so far today? Uh, well, you've basically sold me the expectations um, of what we're going to be doing and, um, you know, shifting our commitment to affirmation. I remember you saying that. So I sold you on a key phrase. Okay, that's good. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the visual first, right? So we have a visual, <clears throat> hopefully my, my lighting is doing a better job here. I don't understand what's going on. It uh, probably looks a little better. So the first thing is the visual, right? Relative to what your client's gonna see or what we see from our peers. So if I move away, my background is kind of non-partisan, non-political, non-whatever, right? I do that intentionally because I just want people to see what I have and go, oh, that looks nice, and then forget about it. Right? I don't want to have anything behind me that distracts from the discussion I'm going to have with you. Or if I'm sitting with a client, I don't want anything to distract the client from what uh, they're there for, which potentially easily can happen if you have something behind you you're not even aware about. Okay. So I have a little picture over here to the right. I got a nice little vase there. I got a little circular thing, a little tiny plant, bookshelf, whatever. So I have that. Not everybody has the ability to do that. Right. And some of us uh, don't have a background that lends itself. When I first started, I was working with a laptop and you couldn't really see anything behind me. Uh, or what you could see behind me, I probably didn't want people to see. So one of the things I did in Zoom is I blurred my background. All of us have the ability to do that <clears throat> if you wanted to. You can blur your background. So it looks like Tyler's background is blurred. Tyler, can you tell us how you did that? Uh... I think if you go under more settings when you're going to join the Zoom call and click on your camera, it'll give you all the different backgrounds that you can put, and it'll also give you the option to blur it. Right. So definitely you can do that there. Let me see if 
uh, click the three buttons next to your picture. Yeah, you could do it there. If uh, you're looking at my screen right here on the left, you can see this is on a Windows machine. I can click settings. And when I click settings, this screen comes up and background and effects, I can click on that. And now I can blur my background. So now it's using an algorithm, right? And my background gets blurred, which is totally fine. But what happens is if I, if I do things like this, the background, then potentially you can see some of it, right? So just keep that in mind that it's using an algorithm to really try to focus on your face and your head so that that shows up. And then obviously your shoulders and whatnot. But if you have anything else in the background or you, you uh, use gestures like hand gestures, you're going to get this kind of pixelating effect. Does everybody see that? Great. So if you can avoid that at some point in the future, I highly advise that you do. The other thing you can do is you can turn on a background, right? I can turn this one on so everyone can see me in Hawaii, right? That's standard in your Zoom package. You can use those types of things to ensure that whatever your background is, that you're only seeing this. But the lighting has to be good. If your lighting is bad, what ends up happening is not only do you pixelate, you can see a little white behind me, but your face will pixelate as well as you move because the algorithm can't keep up with your head if the lighting is poor. So does everybody see kind of where I got that from, right? So I clicked on for the windows, open up your Zoom right there, the settings. And then from settings, I went into here, it starts in general, and then it goes to background and effects. And now I can blur it, or I can say none, or I can use my Golden Gate Bridge picture because I'm from the West Coast. So all of us think about how they you want to do that because anything that's behind you is going to be seen by your clients and they're going to focus on it or hopefully they'll have something like this where there's no focus at all. So I'm using a camera, not just a web camera, but an actual camera so you can all see uh, uh, my background. Now I do have a webcam that I use, which looks like this. And you see the difference between that and the previous picture. So this is a webcam and this is the quality of the webcam and I have it mounted right below the camera. And I do that because I started with this webcam. When I started my career, I was using this one and now I've upgraded to an actual camera. Uh, it'll get better and better as time goes on simply because I want to have the best professional image that I can with folks like you and also with our clients. Is there any questions about that? No. Okay. Perfect. So let me stop that share there. Go back here. All right. So background, I'm selling you every day. We sold some stuff based on the image. Now we're selling stuff based on uh, what it is that I said, George, what have I sold you so far today? George, we cannot hear you. I guess it helped if I do that. <laughs> but uh, you sold me on the fact that I figured you were probably using a green screen. Or are you using a green screen for your background? No, actually. Nope. See, this is oh, the okay. real deal, right? Okay. Well, it kind of looked but like I, it could have been. <laughs> I have used a green screen in the past when I first started out. Definitely, I used a green screen. Okay. Well, maybe when we can all afford a nice office setup, then we'll be able to have one like you. But um well the point there is is that using the green screen you can change you can achieve some of the same effects. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And is what you sold me on is that learning more about the company. Um learning actually more about what veterans, you know, the, the stuff VFW that I did not know and mm -hmm. how much they do for the veterans and stuff. And, and then um, you sold me the fact that, you know, that y'all really care about an agent and you care in your group, the AO group, being the number one group, that y'all care about training because most people, like you said, when you started, and I've been done that way, they hand you a rate book and say, go buy some leads and start making phone calls. <laughs> and they charge and, you money right off the bat for those leads, don't they? Yeah. And, you know, 
at least here, okay, it's not costing us anything for leads. So if we do screw up to start with, we're not going in the hole exactly. thousands of dollars trying to learn. Absolutely. And we ain't got that kind of money. So that's good. I'm glad you got that. You know, y'all, y'all care more about the agent. And what I don't understand why everybody else don't, because like you said, you know, when you mentioned about the licenses that your upline person ain't going to make a dime if you're trying to get a license, you know, do business in a state they don't have a license in. And mm -hmm. they're the ones who brought you in. They're the ones making sure you're getting trained and they're entitled to an override. That's the whole point about building a team. And exactly. we're here. I feel like, you know, you care more about the agent. You care more about making sure they're trained and trained properly before you turn them loose. Mm -hmm. And since y'all do spend a lot of money on them leads, you want to make sure we know what we're doing before we start talking to those leads that y'all are paying for. Exactly. That's exactly right. You nailed it on the head, right? As a quick aside, I talked with five different agency owners before I went over. And I told you I'm a third generation insurance director. So I know the insurance business from the outside as well as from the inside. And I basically told four of them, yeah, no, I'm never joining your team. <laughs> There's no way that I would uh, join the team. And then I met Mario Hiro and I flew down to uh, sit down with him and his brother at a football game. And we chatted about the future. We chatted about what I think I can do. And that's why I'm here, right? I believe firmly in making sure that there's a baseline understanding from an agent's perspective about the science of what we do. And then you continue to refine your craft so that the art of the sale starts to come through as well. And the fact that this organization spends the time, the money, and the effort to put back into you to give you every opportunity to win is something you don't see in the insurance field very often. You just don't, unless you're going to be a uh, salaried uh, person working for like State Farm or something like that. But then what happens is that your compensation is capped. You can only make so much. You can't go above and beyond and make what some of these folks here make. Uh, in terms of my background, so this is the background that I used when I first started my career, right here. This is the one I always use time and time again. So you can see it does okay. And I had a green screen. So a little pixelating that you see going on, I didn't have happen because I had a green screen. So now uh, I'm in an office and I do this a little bit differently and that's permanently and I know I don't have any issues with anything pixelating other than the actual image of my face, which is depressing to look at uh, as it is. Everything else is okay. All right. So uh, that's what I've sold you. Let's find out from Dominic. Dominic, what is a class sold to me so far today? Can you repeat the question? What has the class sold to me? I guess that we're, uh, we're here to learn from you. And, um, you give us the opportunity um, to learn from you, I guess. Okay. Gotcha. Leslie, what has the class sold to me today so far? This is a hard answer to, to find, but I think everyone showed up. Um, we were mostly all on time. Um, we are here to gain knowledge from you and receive the knowledge that uh, you're willing to give us. Mm -hmm. um, we are asking questions and listening and being attentive. Um, and that we are eager to learn and move on through American and Kamai. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, yeah, I would say what you've sold me so far today is your commitment, right? Everyone's here, everyone's listening, everyone's engaging. So I have a certain uh, level of commitment from all of you as a class. And then what I want to do over the course of the next two weeks is shift that commitment to affirmation so that we can really buy into what we're doing. Because the more you buy into it, I'm telling you, the more money you can make. Some of the stuff that you're going to hear us talk about, you're like, come on, really? I'm telling you, really. If you do exactly everything that I spell out and you take the coaching from your upline, 
there is not one person in this group that can't make really good money. So let's talk about what really good money means. Let's go to Ethan. Ethan, what's really good money mean to you in terms of a yearly comp that you want to make from this job in your first year? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, <clears throat> I've, uh, you know, I got a lot of overhead at this point in my life between kids and mortgages. And, um, and so I'm looking for something that surpasses where I recently came from. Um, mm -hmm. And I like that there's theoretically no cap, depending on the hours of the day that I'm willing to work and mm -hmm. my ability to uh, win clients. Um, the sky's the limit financially. So I'm excited to finally have that power in my own hands exclusively mm -hmm. for a while. <laughs> So what did you not tell me? What did I not tell you? A number? There you go. You didn't tell me <laughs> a number, right? So yeah. one of the things that everyone's going to learn how to do is be in control, right? Because when you're talking to clients, you are the ones that are in control, not the client. The moment a client takes control, like the Ethan did, he told me the story about, well, I've got not baggage. I have a lot of overhead, right? And baggage. <laughs> I got a lot of overhead. I got mortgages and all that. So he answered my question without giving me the response I was looking for, right? Which is the number. And quite frankly, all of us are going to know how much we make. It's really simple math. Whatever you book, you get paid roughly half, uh, sorry, 50% of. Just think of it that way. You sold $10,000, you get paid $5,000. You sold $100,000, you get paid at least $50,000, if not more. So understanding that number, Sherry Brecken, what is the number that's reasonable to you to make in a year? Reasonable? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to shoot for 100,000. Okay, six figures. Tyler Nelson, what about you? Uh, six figures as well, 100 to 150,000. 100 to 150. Clevin. I understand that you're still working your second job, but once you get rid of that and we have you working full time, what do you want to make? I had to turn my mic off. I'm only working my other job until I get some income from this one. So, understood. I'm, if you were working I'm for us full time, six figures also. Six figures. Sell G, sell G. God, I'm going to work on that. Sell G. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Okay. How much sell G? Uh, I am <laughs> yeah, well, during the pandemic, there wasn't a whole lot to be happy about. Um, but definitely shooting for six figures as well. I'm kind of thinking it in terms of monthly for me. It just breaks down better. So I'm shooting for ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars a month. Okay. When we do our uh, what's called our gauntlet, which is our last uh, survey, we ask you on a monthly basis. Now that you've been through the course, how much do you want to make? And the numbers vary, and, and I give you ranges, so you don't have to give me the exact number, but ranges are good. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Who am I going to ask next? David Fulfer, what's a reasonable expectation for you? I don't know if it's reasonable, but my goal is 250K the first year. Um, okay. I have big plans and big goals, and awesome. I want to I want to meet it if I if I can't, I hope to get close mm -hmm. and don't want to fail. I want to wake up every morning excited to get after it. Awesome. So uh, what did our recruiter, so you were, all of us were recruited by somebody, I'm assuming, or we saw an ad and we went through the overview, right? Who, who of us used the recruiter and actually talked to somebody who brought you into the organization? Oh, Raise your hands. Did oh. that. Emily Johnson. How much did your recruiter tell you you could make? An unlimited amount. It's just up to me on how much work I want to put in and how much effort I want to choose. So they didn't give you a minimum number that you should be expecting to make? They said a minimum of sixty to 75000 Okay. Tracy Hall, how about you? What was? Did you have a recruiter? Uh, you're muted, Tracy, if you can hear me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I received an email in the beginning and mm -hmm. I think that that was like a baseline. And then if you wanted to become a coach, it was probably more in the $100,000 area. If I remember correctly, that was about three weeks ago. Okay. So, 
Perfect. So we have some idea of kind of what we want to make. We know what our recruiters told it. Do you want me to kind of break it down for you guys of what should be a reasonable expectation? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. So your first three months is going to be here. Whatever here is, it's going to be here in terms of how much you're going to make. Because as a 1099 employee, <clears throat> that's commission-based only, <clears throat> you only make whatever it is that you sold, right? You have a number of ways you can make money. First and foremost is what we call commission. The second way is what's called the world's greatest bonus, each of which are paid out every Friday. So today is Monday. If I book a deal today, I will get paid out on that deal Friday. We advance your entire year on the very first paycheck. So what that means is if you sold somebody $100 a day, a plan that costs $100 a day for life insurance, that, sorry, $100 a month, that'd be nice, $100 a day. It was $100 a month. That's $1,200 for the year. That's called ALP or annualized life premium. Out of that $1,200, we would give you the entire credit as an advance, even though the client hasn't paid for the entire year yet. So the insurance business, we advance you your commissions for that. So $1,200 is what you sold. <clears throat> Roughly, you get about 38%, maybe a little bit more in terms of commissions. And then every week, once you surpass $2,000 of sales, you get what's called the world's greatest bonus on top of that. So what ends up happening is that you average about 50% of whatever you sell is going to be compensation to you. And we do it every single Friday. So the cutoff date is Tuesday night, sometimes Wednesday morning if somebody can get it in. But in your minds, you should always say Tuesday night. If I sell anything between Wednesday and Tuesday night, I'm going to get paid that upcoming Friday. If I don't, then I'll get paid the next Friday. We pay every single Friday, rain or shine. And you will know what you sold. You'll be able to track it. You'll know where everything is. And I'll teach you and show you so you can calculate exactly how much money you should be seeing in your bank account. How many of us have signed contracts with AO? One, two, three, four. Some of us don't. A lot of us do. <clears throat> Once you pass your test and you are licensed, you will sign a contract with AO. We've all signed that contract. When you sign that contract, you will give us all the information that we need to be able to deposit the uh, commissions and bonuses and anything else directly into your account. So if you haven't done it yet, you will. <clears throat> then that money will show up. Keep in mind you're a 1099 employee. So whatever you earn, we're paying you 100% of it. We're not taking any taxes out. You need to take care of that on your own. <clears throat> uh, so that's how that works relative to comp. The, I have seen people make $20,000 in their first month as soon as they're released. So I want us to think about how you do that. And we're going to go through and we'll break it down, but just do the exercise in your mind. The average ALP per sale is $1,200. So I'm gonna take my little calculator out and we're gonna do it together, ready? So $1,200, actually we're gonna take $20,000, which is what I said somebody's made and divide it by 1,200. That equals to 16 sales. 16 divided by four weeks <clears throat> is four sales a week. If you're doing four sales a week, which is reasonable to do, and each one of those sales are worth 1200 bucks, that's $20,000. If you sold $20,000, how much goes into your pocket? 20,000. Uh, 50% roughly, remember? <laughs> so in my example, that's $10,000, okay? 500, or not, sorry, 5,000 for 10,000. Yeah, that's good. Sure. Who yeah, said that? Said the same thing. So you sold 20,000, you're roughly getting 10,000, right? So to make 20,000 in a month, you have to sell how many? 32. 32, roughly, right? And then that goes up or down depending upon what your average ALP is. 
I think somebody asked me, what is the average ALP for a new hire? I've seen the ALP to be over 2,000. I've seen the ALP on average, and it could be as low as 400. The reason for that is it depends on what you're selling and how you sold it. And we're going to learn <clears throat> together, we're going to discover how to put options together for clients and guide them into buying, you know, a certain amount or spending about $100 a month, if not more. So if you're spending over $100 a month, you're going to have better than 1200 ALP. 1200 ALP per sale or annualized life premium per sale, you multiply that times the number of sales and that's how much ALP for the month you've generated. And then you just multiply that by 0.5 and that gives you a rough, rough estimate of how much money you're going to make. Now, I've seen students <clears throat> generate zero dollars in their first month. And that has more to do with them not making phone calls or having other jobs and trying to get started. But somebody who jumps in full force, gets their leads, does everything that I'm suggesting they do in the training class, there's nothing that says you can't hit $40,000 in revenue. And 40,000 will give you the 20K in the month, right? So again, $40,000 divided by the average of 1,200 is 33 sales, right? 33 sales. So you multiply that by, or divide that by the number of days in a week, you start to figure out how many people do I need to see? Now, usually what happens in the first couple of months on average, we generate uh, anywhere between one to, th one to two, one to two and a half sales a week for the average student. So if that being the case, Ethan, how much would that person make in their first month? Let's say two sales a week. Two sales a week, assuming mm -hmm. that it's a $1,200 annual policy, mm -hmm. 1200 bucks, give or take. Mm -hmm. What was that, $4,800 a month? Give or take, yeah, right there. It's about 4800 yeah. So that's on the average, right? So what that means is some are going to fall below, some people are going to fall much higher. But if you say to yourself, I'm just the average person and I'm generating almost $5,000 <clears> in income in the month, that's getting me started where I want to be. And some people stay there, some people dip. Most people then start to accelerate. Because once you get the taste of the money in your bank account, <clears throat> you want more of it. And you're helping more families, you're doing all the rest of that. That's the one way to make money. There's other ways to make money. I think we talked about having our own teams, things of that nature. We'll get into that later. But I would tell all of you that if you have anybody who's interested or might be interested in this, you start the process of recruiting them because they'll help accelerate your pay. Just like all of you are coming in, anything that you sell, your upline gets uh, credit for that. It does nothing to how much gets paid out to you. So they're not taking a piece and moving around. No, it doesn't work that way. Whatever you make here is what you make. Because this business is so lucrative, there's plenty of money to pay your upline. <clears throat> so let's try to see how I do first. I'm sorry? I said, I got people waiting to see how I do first. There you go. <clears throat> so think of it this way. When we talk about your first sale, let's just say you sell $100 a month, so it's $1,200, right? In the first year, we advance you 100% of that, okay? In the second year, what we call renewal, how much do you get of that $1,200? Probably 50%. You get five. You get 5%, okay? The whole point of our job is to continue to sell new products to folks, whether they're people we've never talked to before as American income, or if they are, then these are people who want to buy additional products, right? So that means for every sale that you do, you're getting $60 on average for that sale every year moving forward. Well, that means the company got 1200 bucks theoretically throughout that second year, right? And they only paid out 60. So there's 1240 left or 1140. So it's a very profitable business up until somebody dies, right? When somebody dies, we have to pay out a pretty big chunk of the money. But still in this financial services sector called insurance, there's a lot of money to be made. So ultimately what that means is no one has to take from you in order to get paid in leadership. Leadership is getting paid off growth. They're getting paid off performance bonuses, things of that nature. 
which is all a good thing because that means the money that you make still goes into your pocket. And renewals, once you're with the company for 10 years or for life. So what that means is if I sold somebody a $1,200 policy, next year on the anniversary, I'm gonna get paid $60. The next year after that, I'm gonna get paid uh, a certain percentage and so on and so forth until after 10 years, I'm getting 100% of those renewals, even if I'm no longer with the company, even if I die. So let's think about what that means. Forget about how much money you're making or how much money I'm making. Every time I sell something, as long as that buyer or that client continues to pay on that policy, I get paid on it every year. And if I die, my estate gets paid on it. So when you sign your contracts, you're actually gonna put on there your estate information because you're all part of a union now and part of the union negotiation is that the renewals, once you hit 10 years, are 100% vested and they will always pay out until the client stops paying. Does that make sense to you, Tatiana? Yes. Yes. Is that one of the reasons you joined? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> little bit, right? Generational wealth. And when we say that, I don't mean that like philosophically or whatever. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt. If you guys do this job for 10 years, first of all, you're going to make a lot of money for yourself in those 10 years, okay? Just for you getting paid. But after 10 years, if you quit, you retire, you pass away, that money continues, to, the renewal money continues to get paid out to your estate, whoever your beneficiaries are. We have people in this company that are getting renewal checks of $40,000 a month. They're not that far up the chain from where you're at. Now, the guy at the very top, he makes about $2 million a month <laughs> in renewals. That's when he makes a month of renewals without lifting a finger. Once you are doing this job for a while, with, if you don't sell anything after your 10 years for three months, you would still make renewals probably about $20,000 a month. And when you die, that goes to your state. I mean, it's absolutely, you've, I don't know how many of you consider yourself lucky, but you've lucked into an opportunity that gives you generational wealth. And you can track all that. You, you can figure out exactly how much money you're going to make off renewals every single month once you're here for a while. Uh, Emily, you have a question. What is the likelihood of an individual renewing every year? <clears throat> So people on average keep their policies between eight to 14 years, depending upon what age you sold it at. Thank you. Now, the, so this is the veteran mark, right? So they're going to be a little bit older, but if you sell <clears throat> to somebody who's younger, they keep their insurance much longer. So if I sell somebody who's in their thirties and they keep their policy until they're 60, I'm getting renewals for 29 of those years, right? Cause the first year I got the advance. And then after that, I'm getting the renewals. If they die, obviously the renewals stop. But the more people that you sell, the more renewals there are that it's going to pay you out. George, question. So if you uh, leave before 10 years and the company gets your renewals, right? Well, what happens is, is that you vest 10% every year. So if you leave after two years, you're vested at 20%. So you get 20% of the renewal value. The company keeps the other 80 the whole point there is to entice you to stay for the full 10 years because we know if you stay with us for 10 years, you're going to make a lot of money for yourself. And then we know you're going to be set up to have all those renewals pay out for as long as those renewals uh, clients continue to pay. Okay. Okay. Is there uh, any cap on the, I know this is a little bit uh -huh. early, but is there any cap on the size of team that you can build? Well, <clears throat> there is, and we're going to go into that later, but, but when I say there's a cap, you can only have five people at any one time directly reporting to you. The size of the team that builds out underneath them is unlimited. All right, okay. Okay, so if I recruit 10 people, I'm going to have five of those report to me, and then the other five are going to report to one of these five people, and so on and so forth. Okay create yourself a very sizable organization. And part of doing that gets you promoted to different levels. Right. And each brings you more of a percentage of the commission, et cetera, et cetera. And we'll walk through all of that with folks. Okay. 
Uh, Donaldo. All right. So um, I had a question. What happens if uh, my client gets resold by another agent? Does my renewal sure. still stay or no? Yeah. So let's talk about that. So if I sold somebody $1,200 today, and then in six months or a year or two years from now, somebody sold them another policy, you get a credit for the policy that was sold as long as that policy stays active. Okay. You will continue to get paid on the renewals forever. It doesn't matter if somebody sold on top of that. Beautiful. Just like if I sold on top of somebody else, I only get paid on what I sold, not on what you sold previously. So if a client buys $1,200 or $100 a month right now, next year he spends another 100 so that client now is spending $200 a month, I'm getting what I initially sold, and the person that sold after me gets that. Great, understandable. Yep, and that continues to go forever. Which, by the way, and we'll talk about this later, I keep saying that a lot, but we will get to all this stuff. Your uh, agent number <clears throat> changes a lot. So you have an initial agent number that you start with, Every time your hierarchy changes for whatever reason, whether somebody gets promoted, somebody moves out, you move to another group, doesn't matter, your agent number will change. All that means, it still, it doesn't mean anything against you. What it means is that we've tied all your performance to one agent number and one hierarchy. So if there's a change, we need to put a new agent number in place because if you sold anything over here, all those people that were originally in that hierarchy need to get paid out according to our plan. When you move to a different hierarchy, even if it's the same one, but there's a change, you have to have a different agent number so that we can track your performance under this one to make sure you and everybody in your upline gets paid appropriately. Okay. Molly. So um, when you were talking about the premiums and that stuff with the life policy and if let's say the parents bought the ch child mm -hmm. their child um the premiums and uh well after the poly premiums they paid all uh, already paid up but we still get the um the commission um, throughout the child's said so child's you're, life. If I understand correctly, you're talking about a paid up policy where you, as a grandparent or parent, you buy it for your child. And once they reach a certain age, it's fully funded. Yeah, in that circumstance, there's no renewal because we're not charging any more beyond whatever the paid up year is. Okay, so no, we wouldn't get renewals on that. But I would tell you that probably accounts for 2% of your sales, if that. It's a really low number because what happens is the company charges you nominally this rate. And if you're going to do a paid up policy, we charge you that rate. Okay. So okay. you're actually accelerating how much you're getting paid out sooner as an agent. And then when somebody's completely paid up, you don't get paid out anymore on that. The majority of the products we sell are not like that. Okay. okay. I just was um, thinking about what my parents did. So I was just... <clears throat> Yeah, it's a little bit different. So when, and I'm going to show you when you sell somebody who has children, how to sell a policy to that a parent for that child. So when the child becomes of age, they can take ownership of that policy. So that way, uh, one, they'll continue to fund it, all the rest of it. And it's to their advantage to do it than not to do it. So when we get to the options, and I'll, I'll show you how that works. Okay. Awesome. So, did you have another question? Is your hand still up? Um, no, I just was focused on listening. Okay, yeah, no worries, George. Uh, yes, um, so, um, whenever we make a sale to somebody, is that client ours for life, or is it <clears throat> shifted around to another agent later on and they can sell something? That's a very good question. So, I'm going to answer it indirectly first, and then I'll give you the definitive answer. So American Income is set up as a group of independent agents who sell against these leads that are provided by the organization. A lot of people come into American Income and then uh, they either stop selling or they fall off or whatever the case may be. When that happens, American Income wants to make sure that they're still talking to those clients that are paying on a monthly basis, right? So... 
in order not to figure out, well, who's still with us, who's not with us, what American Income does is they create these leads. They're called POS leads. That's called policy owner servicing leads. Those are folks who currently have a policy with us. And we rotate those leads around. So when you sell somebody, <clears throat> there will be someone else from American Income at some point in time that's going to call that person up and try to sell them insurance, additional insurance than what they already have. It's not a bad thing. It's in the best interest of the company to do that, to capture as much revenue as possible <clears throat> from each policy owner, okay? Now, for you, anytime any one of you sell to somebody, what I want you to do is track who you sold to, their contact information, what you sold, and their policy number. So that way you can tell them, hey, we chatted today, October 24th. I'm going to give you a call on... Uh, January 1st, I'm going to call in April and we're going to talk about increasing your coverage because that's something you indicated you wanted to do. And they're going to go, okay, that's fine. So now that means you don't need the lead information from AIL anymore. You have it. You're going to reach out and have that conversation and you're going to build the rapport with that client. So that client feels like, hey, I'm not going to talk to anybody else in American Income. I'm only going to talk to George. But that doesn't mean that American Income is not going to have the lead given to Sam and Sam is going to reach out to your client. I'm not doing it to take anything away. As the question I answered before, you keep everything that you sold. But if there's an opportunity for Sam to sell to that same client more, American Income wants that to happen. Okay. So the short answer is you don't own your clients from American Income's perspective but I'm teaching you that you want to own it from your perspective. And the only way to own it is to keep the contact information and set a time to follow up that client. So if they have any additional referral sponsorships, or if they want to buy more, they're going to buy it from you as opposed to somebody else. So how often do they recycle that lead to somebody else to call? So nominally it's once a year. But realistically, you could see that lead recycled within three months. And not for any other reason than, let's think of it this way. If you sold a client a life policy with an accidental death benefit, somebody at AIL runs a report and is going to get that accidental death benefit amount. And they're going to arrange for somebody to call that client and talk about the difference between guaranteed and non-guaranteed coverage and say, Mr. Client, you bought $30,000 of whole life, which is guaranteed, and then you have $100,000 of non-guaranteed insurance and an accidental death benefit. I'm sure you probably wanted $130,000 to pay out to your family in the event of your death. Is that correct? Well, yeah, I thought that's what I was getting. Not a problem. Let me take care of that for you. And so now they're going to sell $100,000 of whole life in order to get the full amount guaranteed to that client. So that can happen at any time. That's why it's incumbent upon us when we're talking to our veterans and veterans' families to make sure that we are giving that client exactly what they expect and what they need and doing it now, or if they're not ready to spend that full money, we talk about, hey, let's get you started, get you enrolled in the program, and then I can come back to you at a certain time and we can adjust it further to make sure you're maximizing your payout. Does that answer your question, George? Yeah. Okay. No other questions? Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so we talked about the bigger picture. Oh, we're talking about how much we get paid, right? We kind of walked through that process. Now, every time you sell something, there is a place that you can go that's going to tell you exactly what you sold uh, and track it for you. Okay, you ha all have access to this when you have your EF. I'm sorry, when you have your HP Pro working, things of that nature. Uh, you can see everything that you sold. You know where you're at. You'll also have your contracts that tell you how much you get paid pursuant to what you sold so that you can calculate every single time you sell something, how much should show up in your bank account. Okay. The one thing that you do get charged for, and you, there is a charge, is your uh, union dues. Okay. Every month you're going to get charged for your union dues. Now, all that means is if you sell something, then we'll subtract whatever the union due charge is. I think it's $22, something like that because we all belong to a union. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the only thing we charge and we only charge it if you actually sold something. Well, no, let's be clear. I sell it, I charge you, not I, the organization charges you every month 
but you will only have it subtracted from your earnings. There's never going to be a situation where we reach into your bank account and pull money out. Okay. So if is you sell 12 per bucks, month? say again. Is that $22 per month? Yes. Okay. It's just a union due. And like I said, all it means is if you thought you were going to get paid $150, if your union dues were due at that time period, we would then uh, only give you $128 in your bank account. What, whatever. Yeah, that's $150 minus $22. And I think the union dues are $22. But trust me, you're all going to make so much money that $22 won't matter to you. Okay. Ethan, you have a question. Yeah, so I, I think I did a strange scenario when I was filling out my paperwork with, with American Income because I opted out of the union. Um, and I talked to my SA about that, and, uh, and they said that was strange, but that it may not be an issue since this, uh, the working with dire veterans directly at this point, it doesn't overlap. Um, well, it does, because you're, everybody who works with us, regardless of what market you sell into, you're theoretically the member of the local Okay. Uh, in my case, it's the office. Well, for all of us, it's the Office of Professional Employees, Local 277. So just reach out to your admin and let okay. them know. Because your badge, right? On your badge, I don't know if you guys can see this. Let's try this. On my badge, down there it says union, right? We're all members of the union. So if you opted out, I mean, as long as you don't mind paying the 22 bucks, and remember, the only way that you're getting your renewals and stuff like that is if you're a member of the union that negotiated yeah. on your... Right. Well, I heard you say that earlier. I'm like, well, maybe I should go back. I mean, he, uh, my, my essay told me that I can, I can change that at any time. Yeah, you can change it um, at any time. I didn't okay. realize how like integrated that piece of it was going to be with all of this when I signed up. <laughs> yeah, you want to be part of that. And believe me, I'm not a union guy. I mean, I'm Silicon Valley. There's no unions here for a variety of reasons. That's how I feel, but I guess, you know, times have changed. In this case, <laughs> it makes sense. There's only upside and it only costs me the 22 or whatever it is a month. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. No worries. So we talked uh, about the money it, and we're going to get into compensation and I'm going to break everything down for you. But in a generic sense, does anybody have any questions about comp? How do you get paid? when you get paid. No? Okay. And if you do, just let me know and we'll chat about it. Okay. So we have that part done. And I, George, did you have another question or is your hand still raised? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask, um, what kind of benefits or is there a benefit package for being in the union? So you do have access to, I think it's Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and we'll look at that uh, later. Uh, you have the benefits of the way the compensation is set up, because that's negotiated on your behalf by the union. Uh, but because you're an independent contractor, other than that, there's not going to be any typical benefits you would get by being a W-2 employee for a company. Yeah. Okay. But so that's a good thing. For. Yeah, th that's a good thing because you can make more money doing that. You can write off a lot of your expenses associated with doing this job. So I write off my car. I write off my phone. I write off... Uh, my Zoom expense, uh, I write off a lot of stuff that otherwise working a regular job, I'd never be able to write off. Yes, Clevin. Are we offered any of the insurance that we sell? Yeah, you can buy any of the insurance that we sell. Now, Is you're it pay us at any kind of discount rate or we pay the same that anybody no, else? Pay, you pay the same as anybody else. And we have to qualify as mm -hmm. medically necessary. Uh, uh, the same way your clients have to qualify, you would have to qualify. Okay. Absolutely. So I got insurance now, so I'll just wonder. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you were to get insurance on yourself, you would be considered controlled business, which means no one would get an advance against whatever they sold on you. So if any of you want to get insurance for you or your families, work with your upline to get that set up. Okay. Can I change when I lead this company? Can I take? The insurance that I have now and change it over to one of our, our policies. The company you have. Oh, so you're talking about where you're working full time right now? Mm -hmm. So you can't you can't change it over. You can't transition it from Acme Company as an example into American income. You what happens is just like our clients, you start with American income separate from anything else that you're doing. 
We have a whole dialogue where we talk about insurance through your work and how that's not guaranteed. Because if you leave your job for any reason, whether you get laid off, you retire, you leave on your own, that insurance typically doesn't follow you. So if when you, you buy insurance, but don't it follow you if you've been there for more than five years? Well, you'd have you talk about your current company you're with. Yeah, I've been there for more than five years. So you when I to, leave, I have the option of keeping in my insurance. Absolutely, you probably can, but take a look at how much that's going to cost you. And I think yeah, gonna, I, I, yeah, I'm worried about that too. Yeah. Yeah, so if I were you, uh, take a look at that, understand where you're at. The same thing I would tell a client is, hey, let's look at it together. Show me the paperwork, and I guarantee you that if they're allowing you to take that when you leave, you're going to end up paying a lot more money. Absolutely, because you're part of a, usually it's group life insurance, and as yep. long as you're a member of the group, you qualify. The moment you're not, the rates go up. If they allow you to take it at all, the rates are going to go up. And then we become very competitive with those rates. Corey Cashman, you have to pay employers part two. I don't know what you mean by that. So if you're gonna if you're gonna take over the insurance policy, you would have to pay the amount that the employer put into that. Oh yeah. It, okay. it, and and so it turns turns out like double. Yeah. Yeah, I was saying the same thing about the rate. The rate goes up because your employer is paying a good portion, as Corey said, maybe fifty percent. In some cases, they pay up to 90, 95 percent. Oh, okay. The moment you leave, the company that's providing that coverage still needs to get paid. Yeah. So that means it's now on you to pay it. And that's why it becomes prohibitive for a lot of people to take their insurance when they go. Uh, Sherry, please. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to comment, too, that... Um, Clevin, that you've been there for longer than five years and it's a group insurance policy. Uh, it would be the same as um, me and my state job that I left. You have 31 days to transfer. Yeah, it. yeah I knew that. Yeah, yeah but um, you won't have to take a physical or anything if you do it right. within the time frame. Yeah, so keep in mind, transfer is not the same as like moving it to us, right? Transfer means you keep the same insurance company. It's just no longer considered an employer uh, benefit. It's your own policy directly with that carrier. And the veterans mark is the same way. We'll, we'll learn about that. The servicemen, uh, servicemen, service person, the group life insurance policy, you have up to, I think, 270 days to transfer that into a VGLI or a veterans group life insurance policy. Uh, we'll go through all the permutations of that and what it means and why you need to know it so that you sound credible when speaking with your clients about potentially the policies that they either have or had had uh, with the VA, okay? All right, uh, any other questions about comp in general right now? Okay, Leslie, quiz time. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, this month in the month of October, I sold five policies with an average ALP of $1,200 each on a 50% contract, how much money did I make this month? Can I use my calculator? Of course, yeah, it's, a, it's not a test. I wanna make sure that I imparted upon you what every one of you should know is that you're here to take care of people, you're here to work your work lifestyle uh, remotely in most cases, but most importantly, I wanna make sure everybody understands on generally how much money they should be making when they sell something. Okay. All right, Leslie. So you said he's at $1,200 a piece. Uh -huh. And then you would, uh, you would take the um, five times 1,200, uh -huh. which gives you $6,000 divided mm -hmm. by 50, and you would get $100 per policy times... I think I'm wrong. One. So you were really close. So, you take five, the number of policies, okay. times the average ALP, which is 1200 And you get $6,000. Right. And then it's really and simple. Then, you multiply that times 0.5. Okay. That was where I was getting wrong. So you get $3,000. Right. So that's a very uh, general rule of thumb. Your pay in a lot of cases will be higher than that because 
Cool. I'll show you how all that works. But basically, just think in your mind, anytime you're selling something, whatever that annualized ALP is, you're going to get about 50%. You're going to get about 50%. Okay. All righty. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's mute, Leslie. <laughs> I can hear myself on delay. Uh, Tyler Nelson. Yep. I want a big week. I'm sorry. I want a big month in November. I want to make $30,000 in my bank account. Average ALP is $1,000. How many sales do I need? About 30. You need 60, do you? Yep, 60. David Fuller. Is that right? Uh, Fulfer. <laughs> Dave, Fulfer. how's it going? Fulfer. How many sales do I need? Is it 60? Is it 30? Is it 10? Um, I got 15. 15. You need 15 sales. 15 sales at $1,000 is 15,000, right? At 50%, I get paid $7,500. All right. Give me the figures again. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Um, I want to make $30,000 this month. Average ALP is $1,000. How many sales do I need to make? Oh, 60. There you go, 60, right? Once you get this, it's very simple. I mean, it's very simple for us to talk about it. Once you're actually releasing the field and you're selling, you're going to track everything to know exactly where you're at. But on average, it's about 50%, okay? Now, there's other ways to make money by selling, like AHP, accident and health policies. That's a different scenario. Um, that's on top of whatever you made on the life policies, okay? All right, so... Let's go back to my beautiful screen and let's see what we can discover together. All right, there we go. What do we got here? Did the training introduction? Okay, the market explanation. So American Income, we are literally partnered with over 40,000 associations and organizations, whether they're union, whether they're uh, veteran service organizations, whether they're credit unions, over 40,000. So is that powerful? I mean, is that impressive to anybody that we have relationships with over 40,000? Oh, Tyler with Nelson. With being, with we being, um, so I'm sorry, go ahead. With being, um, um rated the highest in, the country and that's such I rec I'm not surprised at the fact that it is that high mm -hmm. and so it's not not overwhelmingly surprising okay. um, in that fact. So that number continues to grow because we're setting up relationships with veteran service organizations. As we heard in the Andrew Haskins video, the veteran service organizations include what? They include the VFW, the Veterans for Foreign Wars. Yeah, it includes uh, the American Legion. What's the other one? What's the third one? American Legions, VFW. And vets. And vets. There's another one, Disabled Veterans of America. That's out there. And we're constantly working with those state leadership to set up the relationship with that state so we can add them to our list. So in the bigger picture, if somebody is thinking about checking us out, let's say I'm talking to a client, they're like, hey, I want to know who you guys are, what you're about. If we talk about the fact that we have relationships with 40,000 organizations who have vetted us, ad infinitum, right? They've checked into us and they're recommending us to their members. Does that carry weight for that client that I'm talking to on the phone? Yes. Yeah, probably, right? It carries a little bit. And we give you language about what to say if somebody's coming at you from that perspective. But for me as a salesperson, if I know there's four or 40,000 organizations that have chosen uh, American income to do business with or provide a product or service to one of my members, I'm probably going to feel pretty good about them. Now you can look up American income and you can see the positive reviews and you can see the reviews that maybe aren't so positive. Let's just be frank. 
But I want us to think about what those reviews are. The reviews that are positive are either people who are agents that have made a pretty good amount of money or their families that have gotten paid out within 24 to 48 hours when a loved one has died. The negative reviews are going to be by those folks who tried to become an agent and either worked in a challenging organization, they didn't get all the support they needed, or they just felt it wasn't a good fit for them. But when you talk to family members who work with us after a loved one dies and they see how quickly we pay out the money, they're pretty appreciative of, uh, appreciative rather, of what we do. So one of the things that we do that delineates us or differentiates us from other insurance companies is that our whole life product, we let folks know that they have the freedom of choice certificate. And I'm gonna show you guys all this stuff, but basically it's just a certificate that they take to the funeral home or the funeral director. And then we take care of everything after that. Because we've worked with every funeral home throughout the United States and Canada and New Zealand, every last one of them. There's not one we haven't worked with. When we know that somebody needs to pay for their funeral fall expenses and the family rather needs to pay for that, someone's died and they have a policy with us its whole life, they give us the information, we're on the phone immediately with that funeral director and we've guaranteed that we're gonna pay the amount that they've negotiated within 24 to 48 hours. If that amount of money is less than the total policy amount, we pay the differential to the family. There is no other insurance company that does that that quickly. We do it because when we first started out, the unions required that we did that in a timely fashion. Because here's the worst scenario that you can think of when it comes to somebody dying. Let's say I'm married, I got insurance, everything's fine, and all of a sudden I have a heart attack and I die. My family goes to the insurance company and says, hey, my father died and we need to get the money paid out. We got to pay for his funeral. And the insurance company goes, yeah, not a problem, but it's going to take like four to six weeks before we issue you a check. When does the funeral director, David, need their money in order to bury me? Um, immediately. Yeah, immediately. They want their money now. So what they'll do is like, hey, not a problem, Mr. Sweet's family. We'll have you sign this little loan at a percentage rate of maybe 19%. <laughs> and we'll work, you know, have a third party company fund that process. Is there any risk for them? No, they're getting paid. And now your family is paying instead of this amount of money, they're paying that amount of money because they have to pay all the interest on top of the loan amount. We solve that problem completely. So veterans families do not have to overpay for funeral fund expenses. They can pay for more coverage than they need to pay for that, but any additional money goes directly to the family. And if you look at our ratings, like on AM Best, that's what really matters at the end of the day. Not on what agents or what employees thought of us. What matters is what if families think of us that needed us in the worst day of their life. Bottom line is, and why I stay with the organization, is because we come through. And the beauty is we come through whether you've paid on that policy for 30 years or you've paid on that policy for one day. It doesn't matter. If you have a policy that's active with us and you die, your family is going to get paid out. That's the reputation that we have for taking care of our family. So I think that that's incredibly powerful for me. And then we do what's called a needs-based presentation. As you can see here, needs-based. Basically, we've negotiated with the veteran service organizations that fill ex existing gaps in benefits for veterans. So we're not here to replace any benefits that you have. We're here to explain to the veteran what's available to them. And if they have gaps, which a lot of the veteran service organizations are well aware of that they have those gaps, we provide a product that will then bridge that gap to take care of those families. So we're not trying to replace anything they currently have. We're only trying to solve an issue that's been identified when we go through our presentation during what's called the needs analysis. If something crops up there, somebody says, yeah, I got a house. I want to leave it to my kids. And if I die, my wife doesn't have enough money to pay for the house. She'd end up losing it by having to sell it. We can solve that problem, right? That's what we do is we take care of issues. But first and foremost, we have to identify the problem. And then we've got to provide a solution to it that makes sense and fits within the economic needs of that particular client.
And that, in essence, is the entire sale. I mean, I've put it down into a few words, but we do a lot of stuff to get there. But at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. We're identifying gaps. We're filling the gaps. Now, the other thing to note, if I uh, bought a policy from Allstate and I had a problem with the agent, oh my God, I can't believe the agent did this to me, et cetera, et cetera. I can make a complaint against Allstate or that agent. Where does that complaint go, Clevin? If I make a complaint against an agent for Allstate, where does it go? Uh, does it go to the uh, commission? It goes to your state insurance commissioner. Yes, it goes there. And it gets handled, you know, it takes a while. I mean, it will get addressed one way or the other. In our veteran market, Tyler, if I'm a veteran and I felt that you did me wrong, where does my complaint go? Everywhere. Then I go to the government. Which government? Veteran. You know, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> uh, so if I make a complaint against you, the first place I'll probably make a complaint is with my veteran service organization, right? If I belong to the VFW and you did me wrong, I'm going to let the VFW leadership know that, you know, Tyler did not do well. I can't stand AIL. Why are we doing business with them? So that's number one. That's not good for us. But that's the least of our problems because now where's the next place you typically go? The VA. Hey, I'm dealing with American Income Life. They're not taking care of me. They're doing all this crap. Now that's a federal complaint, not at the state level. Now I've got a federal problem. So at the state level, if I have any issues, it's handled within that state. If I have a federal problem, now it's across all 50 states. Does that make sense? So that's why we see here zero complaints because complaints go to the federal government. And by the way, it's a protected market. It's protected typically because of age, but most importantly, it's protected because they're veterans. Everybody knows that, right? Veterans are considered a protected class. When you apply for a job, you say you're a veteran, guess what? The company you applied for has to annotate that. It's a protected market. So if we get a complaint, oof, not good, All right? So let's say I'm talking to a veteran and I get 10 sponsorships. And at the end of those 10 sponsorships, the entire my entire presentation, the veteran says, you know what? I don't want you to contact any of the people that I gave you. Should we contact them? No, we don't want a complaint. It's not worth it to lose your access to this market because you get a complaint against you, okay? We're here to service the veteran market. In the process, we're gonna make pretty good money, but it's not worth a dime if we get a complaint against us. And it's not, easy to get a complaint. I mean, you have to really tick off a veteran in order to get a complaint. For the most part, you're in control of the presentation. You go all the way through. As long as you do what we tell you and how we tell you to do it in terms of the information, how it's provided, the veteran is going to be very happy with you. Okay. Referrals on the other part, though, may not be uh, making a, a complaint rather against the federal government, but what they'll make a complaint to is the person that referred them who in turn goes, oh, my people weren't treated well. They keep getting 9 million calls. They've been told not to call us for doing it anyway. And now they're going to make a complaint. And who are they going to make a complaint with? The VSO or the VA. So we don't want any complaints whatsoever. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, excellent. So I'm looking now at, let me stop my screen share, bring everybody else up here. You all filled out your pre-assessment uh, aptitude or pre-course aptitude assessment or whatever phrase I gave, I gave, right? How many of us, let's ask one person to make it easy. Cell G, did I say it right? Yes, you did. Right. <laughs> no pressure. All right, Cell G, how many people do you think said they're very confident for client engagement? Oh, out of our group? Yep, out of our group. I want to say at least half. So how many people are in our group? I have 22 participants here, minus you, so that's 21. Well, and subtract uh, out the auditor. The <laughs> oh, okay. so 20. So, so 20. at least 10? 
<clears throat> 10. Okay. Lester, how many people do you think are very confident with client engagement? I like that estimate of 50%. So out of 2010. Okay. Gotcha. Seven of us were very confident. Okay. Out of the folks who were very confident relative to phone calling, that's making outbound calls, having a conversation with potential clients. How many of us, George, were very confident? <laughs> Sorry, I got on mute. I didn't That's see right. it. How many? Um, probably five. Okay, eight. Mm. We're very confident. And this is fine. There's nothing, it's not good nor bad. It just is, right? At the end of the course, though, hopefully all of our confidence levels went up. In yeah. terms of using Zoom to present to other people, <laughs> Tracy Hall, since she popped up on my screen, <laughs> now you're sideways, now you're right. Tracy. Out of 20 people, how many people are very confident in using Zoom to present to clients? Nine. Four. Four. Four people. Well, most people probably never use Zoom like we're using it and how you're going to be taught how to use it in order to talk to clients, right? And that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. How many people, Sherry, Brack, Sherry, 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 how many people were very confident with sales methodology? I would say probably half, 10. 10 of us were very confident. Okay. Um, you were very confident giving that answer. <laughs> five of us were very confident. Now that just means five were very confident and maybe there were another six or seven who were confident. So in terms of confidence level, we all see, half of us definitely seem confident doing it. Other half, it's okay. You're going to get more confident because you're going to get a lot of practice in doing this day in and day out. So let's now flip the roles and talk about me. Lester, how confident am I with talking to a class of this size? Uh, is 200% a number that we can give? Just one to a 10. <laughs> 10. So 10. Uh, Patrick, how many times do you think I've done this in my career? Have you provided teaching of this sort to people? Uh, I would say you probably do this like at least a few times every week. So depending on how long you've been at this position, I would say like, man, 40 to 50. And that, that, that's just a guess. I don't know how long you've been doing this. Uh, 40, 50. So it looks like I may have done this a couple of times, right? Um, Corey Cashman. If I've done this a couple of times and I'm somewhat confident, do you believe that the organization has now sold you that they've given you somebody competent enough to teach you how to do this job? Yes, yes. You look, you, you um, inspire confidence in me. <laughs> so all that means is, is they selected me to do this, right? We could have selected a lot of people in the organization to do this because there's a lot of people who are articulate, who come across as professional, and they're very knowledgeable about what they do. So I just happen to be one person that they selected. My point there is that we help coach, train, and develop people to be able to do what I'm doing, but more importantly, be able to do what you all aspire to do, which is to sell insurance and make a lot of money. Mario Hiro has coached four or five people over half a million dollars a year in sales. He's coached one or two people over a million dollars in sales. So think about what that means and how much money these people are making. That's just their own personal production, right? So somebody who sells a million dollars, we know roughly they're going to make 500K in their pocket. And if they have a team of people, which they do when you get to that level, you're going to have a lot of folks, they're probably bringing in another four or 500,000, right? And that's how you get to a million dollars. It is not unreasonable for you guys in three years to be earning a million dollars in your pocket. It is not unreasonable. Does it take a lot of work? Yeah. You're gonna be sitting at your computer, you're gonna be going through every single lead, you're gonna be doing all this stuff, right?
But the point is, if you're highly motivated, you want to do that. Who was it? Jacob Davis? Were you telling me that you're highly invested? Are you here, Jacob? I don't see you. Uh, yes. Are you able to hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm really invested. And it's funny because everyone else was saying these high numbers of six figures and whatnot. I was getting into this just hoping to make 50K. That, to me, is a lot of money. And so... Well, you now have the ability to make a lot more than 50K. Keep in mind that part of the process though, is you don't want to limit yourself to the state that you're in. You want to have your license or what's called a non-resident license for other states. Yeah. Okay. Not for states, but for <laughs> other states. Uh, as an example, I'm in California. So I had my California license first and then I got Virginia, I got uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, uh, all these other states, because what I wanted to do was kind of follow the sun. So I know if I got up at 5.30 in the morning before my workday began, I could actually be talking and talk, uh, calling clients on the East Coast, right? If I'm on the East Coast, I want to have some West Coast uh, states. So that way I know that past nine o'clock when I'm no longer to reach out and call people, it's only six o'clock, dinner time, getting off work time on the West Coast, I can make calls. The yeah. more calls that you make, the more money you're going to make. So that's an investment on you and your upline of the other states that you want to get. In order to get all the leads that you're looking for to make the kind of money that you want, you've got to have more than just one state. And I'm not asking you to invest a huge amount of money. California and Hawaii, I think, are the two of the most expensive states. But Michigan, I think, was $18, right, for a non-resident license. I mean, there's other places that you can go. Uh, that are going to give you what you want from a time perspective, um, the time zone perspective rather, but is it going to cost you an arm and a leg? As you become more successful and you're making money, you're not going to worry about spending a hundred bucks to get a license in a different state. That's the least of your issues. What you're going to be more irritated is, is you spend the money and we're not moving fast enough to give you access to that state. <laughs> That's going to be the problem, right? Uh, and it's something that we can overcome quickly, but that's where your frustrations are going to lie. Okay. So what do we talk about today? We talk a little bit about comp. We talked a little bit about what we're selling, uh, how we're selling it, what I've sold you, what you're selling me. <clears throat> One of the things you guys have told me is we need to practice how to mute and unmute, right? Just the nature of the beast because we're not used to using Zoom, hitting the space bar, whatever. As soon as I make a technical mistake, I guarantee you someone's going to go, hey, you just sold me that you don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. And that's fine, because I learn as much from you as you will learn from me. <clears throat> every class, I have to learn something new, completely. With all this gray hair, I don't know uh, how to do every technical thing under the sun, but I guarantee you I'm going to learn it so I don't make the same mistake again. All right, what's the next thing we're getting into? Ethan, what are we doing next? Are we on the, uh, the landing page section? The landing page section. I'm in your document that you emailed earlier. Um, oh, are you on page six? Yeah. I mean, I okay. guess I need to text the facilitator my full name. <laughs> you know, that was with a, an older class. You guys filled out a different form. And so I have oh. your name, your phone number, and your emails. That's, okay, that's, so what, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's good. I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's a 10-day training course, right? We know that by day nine you're gonna be capable to set and present to a member, okay? We're gonna to practice together how to set an appointment. We're gonna to practice together how to do the presentation. How long do you think a presentation takes, Shana? Um, maybe like 20 minutes, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean if presentation took 20 minutes, I would be a millionaire already. <laughs> I'm no, thinking just, straight you know, to the point, but at least. It takes a while. Long. Let me break it down for you. When you have a presentation with a client and get on Zoom, you have an introduction. Then you talk about the pre-qualified benefits. Then you talk about the family information guide, which has all the sponsorships and referral information. Then you talk about uh, the family will kit and you talk about the three important facts about the veterans. When that's done, then you go through the needs analysis. And when that's done, you present to them the recommendations that the VSO gives for the additional coverage that people may or may not need. If they decide they need that, you can see presentations 
for you all when you begin lasting an hour and a half, okay? As time goes on, you'll become much more efficient. So there's three things that I want us to learn, efficacy, effectiveness, and efficient. Efficacy means you can get it done. No matter how you did it, it got done. Effective means you did it the way that we expected you to do it. And efficient means now you've reduced how much time it takes you so you can do more of them. Okay. Okay. So, so the presentation hours. consists of the entire meeting time. Yes. All the way through. Okay. Yep. From the moment they come on Zoom until they're gone. Okay. They're, okay. So it's that by Thursday, we expect you to be fully capable to set and present to a member. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean you're gonna get it done in 50 minutes. It, it, what it means is that you can articulate what it is the client's expecting to receive, why they called you in the first place or why they set the meeting. You're presenting them options to fill the gaps. And for those clients that wanna do it, you actually uh, fill out an application with them and then submit it. That's all it is. It's fairly straightforward, but we are gonna have times where we have fear spikes. So I'll get to that in just a second. George, you have a question. Yeah, it was on what you previously said. It was talking about that was possible. Did you say it was possible to make a million dollars in three years? Uh, I said it's possible to make a million dollars a year after your third year. After yes. your third year. Okay. It awesome. is possible to do that. I guarantee you that those people that are capable of doing that, they live and breathe American income. They recruit like crazy and they meet with every client they can possibly meet with. It all can right. be, okay? That's all I needed to know. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so um, we expect everybody to make it. You're gonna have to do a video by Saturday showing me the introduction. Then you're gonna practice next week how to do the presentation again and again and again with me, with the class members, on your own time and with your upline if they're available. Because come Thursday, you actually have to do the entire presentation less the application itself. You don't have to do that, but you gotta do everything else with somebody and you're gonna get graded on it. And then when you get graded on it, you need to send that to me. So if your manager is the one that grades you on the rubric, then you send it to me because I want to see it. All right, let's go through all the pieces. So we know the first attachment was this, right? Which is the new agent packet. And it goes through, as you can see on your screen, or actually you can't see on your screen, right? I am talking and not sharing. So on your screen, you have all this information. So on day two, we know what we're going to be doing, HP Pro. On day three, HP Pro, we have a lot of information about what we do and how we do it. Right, we go all the way through that. We have some scenarios that you have to do as homework. And then on day three, we talk about the mobile plan and overview. So every single day is in here, okay? It's in this packet. In addition to that, let's go through all the different pieces. So that was the new agent packet. We have this one here, which is an attachment called the training syllabus. And this tells you what you can expect to do every day without having to go to you know your 48 page packet. So we know on Monday, on Tuesday, hey, we have a guest speaker coming in on Wednesday. Hey, we have a guest speaker dropping in on Friday, right? I've got hot seat and phone rebuttal workshop. That means I know that I'm gonna have to be talking. I know I'm gonna have to be practicing during class time. Next week, we have presentations. Our presentations are broken down into four pieces, section A, section B, section C, and section D. Section A, needs to be done A1 through A5 and sent to me and your manager, right? Uh, I'm going to expect to see that by Saturday, close of business, right? Next week, you've got a guest drop, uh, guest speaker drop in. They're going to talk about how to close using pre-rebuttals and rebuttals. When somebody says, hey, I have an objection. I don't want to buy because of this. We're going to teach you how to overcome those objections. Wednesday, we go through EAP. Thursday, we do a little bit of EAP. I then have a panel, hopefully two to three people, who were folks just like you a year ago. And now their essays, their GAs, whoever, they're going to tell you about survival and success. You're going to get a form for me that you fill out 
that gives me two questions from each one of you, and then I'll take those and I'll facilitate the conversation with the panel so that way you can get your questions answered. Then on Thursday, uh, I'm sorry, that was Thursday. On Friday, holy mackerel, you're done. We talk about how to grow your team. That's what Get Your Five is. And hopefully I can get a senior leader to drop in with us and provide some motivation about what your future can be. So this document is your training syllabus so that you know at any point in time what day you're going to be doing what. And hopefully every day at the end of the day, I'll have the video uploaded to YouTube. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Let's go to the next one. We're talking about this rubric, right? So here's a rubric. This is what it looks like. So in this one, no one has scored, but basically we break it down into various sections, A1 through A8, B1 through B4, C2 through C4, and D1 through D3. And you can see what you're graded on, your demeanor. Are you able to screen share? Are you confident and do you have confidence? Do you know how to get through the introduction, the barrel guide, the family information guide, the people to be notified, the will kit, the three important facts, and referral collection? So you see, every single time we talk to a veteran, we're getting through all of this before we even talk about any insurance. Because our philosophy is we're giving to the veteran before we ask the veteran to give to us. Plus, they need to know this stuff because I think somebody had said before, right? There's some veterans that he knows that think the government's going to pay $10,000 for the funeral. Not the case. It doesn't happen. Next section talks about, again, your demeanor. How confident are you? Talks about the letter that they would have received. Talks about their service period. They qualify because they're a veteran. Then we tie them down, make sure they understand that this is for them and them only. We do the, bill, the, uh, sorry, the needs analysis. And then we start to build a program of options for them. In the C section, we talked about the freedom of choice. We allocate everything appropriately. We provide all the protections. And when we get down to D1, D3, that's when we talk about which option do you want to choose? What makes the most sense for you and your family? That's the close. And I'm going to walk through all of this with you. And you're going to practice. No one's expecting you again to hit 200 points. But based on what I said, Jacob Davis, how many points do we expect you to make in order to be released? I don't remember hearing a number on how many points we needed to be released. What percentage did I say you had to make? I don't recall. I assume 70, but I might be wrong. Anybody can help him? It was 75%. 75%. And you multiply 75% times 200, it's 150 points, 150 right? Points. There you go. So if you keep control and you're competent and you share your screen the way that we teach you how to share it, you're going to get 10, you're going to get 40 points right off the bat, right? And the way that I broke this up is it's every section. So that way we can tell if there's a section where you're not doing as well as you thought you could do, right? So let's say you're really good in the opening, but then when you get to the close, you're not doing so well. This is designed so that we can focus on the areas you need the most help. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is the presentation rubric. So let's go to the next one, which is the... Uh, let's talk about phone scripts. So this is the PA vet phone script. You guys can look at all this and, and learn it. This is what you're going to have to read. When I did this, I had to memorize it. <laughs> all you got to do is read it. You can either print it out or put it on a second screen. So basically, it's like, hi, Corey. My name is Sam. I'm a director with the Veterans Division of American Income. I work in cooperation with the local veterans service organizations. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks. Hey, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, I'm giving you a call regarding the burial guide and will kit for veterans that you requested back in September using the security keyword of Apple. You remember filling out that request? I do. Awesome. So that means, guys, I don't have to say this. I can then go right to yes. If it's yellow, it's a decision point. If it's yes, I continue to move down. Hey, the reason I'm calling is that your benefits have been processed, and it's my job to issue your burial guide. But most importantly, 
explain the VA burial, burial benefits that you and your family are entitled to receive. Now, your benefits cover both you and the spouse. Do you have a spouse or a significant yes. other? You do? Okay, awesome. What's their name? Uh, George. Okay. Now, are you currently working or are you retired? Uh, retired. Oh, that's awesome. I still have to work, unfortunately. Are you home right now? I know I'm calling you on your cell phone. Um, no, I'm not. Okay. Do you know when you're going to be home? Um, probably um, around 6 p.m. 6 p.m.? Okay. Now, for your safety and convenience, we're issuing your benefits over a short Zoom call. It looks like I can take care of that for you today at either 6.30 or 7 o'clock. Which time works best for you and your spouse? How about 7? George will be home by then. Awesome. That's great. Now, the only thing they're asking of you as a veteran is to make sure that tonight at 7 o'clock actually works for both you and George. Because when you take that spot, you're taking away from another veteran. So are you confident 7 o'clock works for you and George? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, awesome. And then I did confirm this is your cell number, right? Yes. Great. What I'm going to do is send you a confirmation text with the Zoom meeting invitation. And I'll give you a call a few minutes if necessary ahead of the appointment to make sure you're able to get on the Zoom. Are you familiar with Zoom? Yes, I am. Okay, awesome. So I'll just see you on the Zoom call. I got you scheduled for today at 7 p.m. with George, okay? Yep. Thanks Thank a you. Lot. Have a great day. Perfect. Right, so bye -bye. That's an appointment. Right? It's that easy if somebody's like completely willing. It is not that hard to do this. You guys are going to be doing this for um, your upline probably starting tomorrow. It's very simple. You have it. You just read it exactly as it is. Okay. Next one is the uh, response card, vet phone script. Same concept, except instead of somebody asking for information about the burial and will kit, now they've returned a response card because they're a member of a uh, veteran service organization. The burial kit and uh, the PAVVET, which is the burial kit and, and will kit, you don't have to be a member of a VSO. You just have to be a veteran. So Sandra Young. Hi, Sandra. My name is Sam. I'm a director with the Veteran Division of American Income, working in cooperation with the California VFW. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? That's awesome. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. Hey, I'm calling you because you recently received a letter about your group death benefit, and you actually filled out a yellow three by five card naming uh, John as your beneficiary. Do you remember doing that? When did I do that? Well, I can't tell looking at it, and it takes us a while to actually get to all these cards. You probably did it sometime earlier this year, and I actually have a copy of the card that I can show you. Uh, do you need to look at it now? Oh, no, that's okay. Thanks for okay. refreshing my memory. No worries. Let me just confirm the information. You wrote down your address as 438 Pocatello Drive, and your date of birth is uh, 2178. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Awesome. So uh, are you currently working or are you retired? I'm currently working. Okay. So I'm not going to go through the rest of it. You can see the exact same script here is the same as the one before, because now we're setting the appointment. And I didn't have to go through all of this stuff because she now remembered who I was, right? Not who I was, but who, <laughs> what she was trying to get at, okay? So we go through that. That's the response card one. Then we have a referral. Let's say somebody gave us somebody as a referral. Hey, Tyler, my name is Sam. I'm the director of the Veterans Division of American Income. How are you doing today? Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm good, how are you? That's awesome. You know, you guys are consistent. I'll have to give you that. Absolutely consistent. So, hey, I had the pleasure of sitting down with uh, John, who is your brother, the other day about your veteran benefits. Did he tell you I'd be calling? He did, yes. He did. That's awesome. So the reason I'm calling you is to set up a time so we can go over those benefits with you and let you know what you're entitled to receive. Now, the benefits cover both you and your spouse. Do you have a spouse or a significant other? Not currently, no. Not currently. Okay, no worries. Are you home right now? Am I calling you on your cell phone? I am actually home right now. Oh, awesome. And so then what we do is we move to a Zoom presentation. So instead of saying all of this stuff here, we say, hey, not a problem. We go ahead and knock that out with you right now. Here's my Zoom login information. Just join me and I can get this done for you. And then I don't need to do all the rest of that. That's the best way to get an appointment. It's called on the spot, right? It means I generate an appointment right now. Now, 
if he wasn't willing to meet right now, then we would go into the rest of this, right? Which is very similar to what we talked about before. Okay. Somebody had a question. What if someone or client knows about Zoom? You mean doesn't know about Zoom? Correct. I meant I accidentally left out That's the word. Okay. So if they don't know about Zoom, then we walk them through what Zoom is and we tell them they can do the Zoom call on their computer, on their tablet, or on their phone. And if they have no idea how to do it, we walk them through how to download the Zoom app onto the phone, just like all of you guys have done, or on your computer, whatever's going to be the most convenient for them. I would say 75% of the presentations people give are actually through the phone, not on a computer, because everyone has a cell phone. What if the person is, um, let's just say, I'm not tech savvy at all in my phone or the computer is nearly a dinosaur and doesn't do Zoom? Mm -hmm. So we walk them through how to download Zoom. And typically every phone that's out there right now can do access email and is a smartphone. So if that's the case, you can have Zoom at no cost as an app on your phone, and then you can see our presentation. If somebody just absolutely can't use Zoom, then you have an issue because you need to show them material, right? Now, there are agents, after you've been around for a while, that can do the entire presentation without a Zoom or a Google Hangouts or whatever, right? Uh, it's very challenging to do. I've done it. It's not easy and you have to know exactly what you're doing and you have to have a lot of interaction with the client because you're trying to paint them a picture in their mind of what you're showing on the screen. So we try, we, you say 95% of the time you gotta show them on a Zoom call, you can show them on a, um, what is it when you have an iPhone, uh, I, what is it called? FaceTime. Video? FaceTime, thank you, gosh. I'm, yeah, FaceTime, anything like that. Because uh, then you can show your screen and you can show it on your uh, phone to their phone if you wanted. So any way you do it is fine, but you actually got to see the client. Does that make sense? It's not a telesales. Yes, uh, I just have had people who are uh, retirees or uh, mm -hmm. like ten, in their 70s who are like, I'm not, I'm going to do the old fashioned flip phone and I'm mm -hmm. in super down. Yeah. So um, for those folks, work with your upline about how best to approach them. If they still want to have a meeting, talk to your upline about how they want to do it. Okay. Okay. George, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Is it possible that you can text a link to the person? through text and they can join your um, Zoom yeah. that way? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I'll teach you, I'll show you guys how to set up your own uh, personal meeting ID so that you can have the same meeting ID every single time you have a meeting, just like I do here, right? And then you can text that directly to the client and they can click on it and join. Yes, Ethan, you have a question? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, what percentage of, you know, these potential clients, customers, no-show for for meetings? Uh, that percentage is pursuant or contingent rather on how well you tied them down to have the meeting. So like the so, phone call, if they agree to the call, but there's some percentage there has to be, right? Yeah, there are always going to be a percentage. Right. I'd say if you're doing a good job for me, uh, tie down probably 80 to 90% will join, particularly okay. in this market. It's when you're selling to a younger market that are working full time that or have families, that's where you have the most challenges. But our market, it's typically older, they usually don't have family members that young and they're much more available. Thank you. Yeah. Clevin. Is there at any, at any time, at any situation that we share, it's going back, we share commissions. Is there any time? Oh, you mean like split a deal? Yes. No, not here. So, I mean, let's, let's, there are times that you may want to do that. But the way that we handle it is whoever the writing agent is, is going to get 100% of the commission. If a lead was referred to that writing agent or something like that, then the writing agent can sell a certain amount of money that they negotiate with, with the person that referred. 
So as an example, when I first started, I was setting phone appointments and I have some experience doing this, right? So I was setting phone appointments for my upline. My upline would give me, if we had a phone, if we had a Zoom appointment and we sold something, they would give me a certain amount of money out of that every single time. So you just work with your upline. On a normal day-to-day -day basis, once you become released as an agent, you typically aren't going to share any commissions whatsoever. So are we in training? Do we have an opportunity to make money when we're making calls? You got to talk to your upline about that. My my first response is going to be probably not because of the way that we do things. But there might be an F or a SA or a field trainer that says, hey, if you make calls on my lead pack, you generate an appointment and then you sit in on that appointment, I might throw you some money. It's entirely up to what they want to do. But as a rule, I don't say that we do that. I can only tell you what my experience is and what some of the essays have done uh, to help out. But remember back then, we didn't have a training class. We didn't have all this stuff. What we have is a script <laughs> that we had to learn by heart and we had phone numbers. So as soon as I was like calling somebody and generating revenue for somebody, I as a sales guy, I was like, okay, I just did that for you. What, what are you doing for me, right? I, I'm not working for free. <laughs> So again, check with your upline about what they want to do. But at the end of the day, you're making calls to learn how to book those appointments, to be comfortable talking to clients on the phone. And you're observing uh, presentations so that you become very familiar with the, the cadence and the rhythm for how that presentation flows. Does that answer your question, sir? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's look at uh, this is the IL summary sheet. This is a best practice. After you sell something, you're gonna send an email to that client and that client's gonna receive the family information guide that we downloaded. I'm gonna show you how all of this works. But in addition, you're gonna fill this out as well. You're gonna put the name, this is a PDF file that's editable. So you're gonna put the name, the date, what you sold, any additional things that you sold, any hospital benefits that you sold, if you sold a cancer plan, you're gonna talk about uh, any additional benefits that they may receive, like a child writer you might wanna put in here. You're gonna put what their organization was, how much they're paying per year. So you click year and then how much they're paying, whether it's coming out of their checking or savings, you put your name, agent number and phone number. Best practices, you fill this out for every sale and you copy your manager every single time. Why do I make this a best practice? Because then you can find what the heck you sold to so-and-so three years ago or three weeks ago or yesterday. Because sometimes, guess what? For whatever reason, the system may not be accessible. Maybe it's going through maintenance. You know, maybe it just crashed and we're trying to recover it. If you've got access to your email and you do this best practice, you will always know what you sold to who. And the reason as a manager, I want you to copy me, not now, right? But when I have my own team, I want them to copy me because I want to know what they're selling. Because I want to know what to expect when they're going to get paid. So there's no surprises. And if I see something where they sold something a little odd, I'm going to ask them about it. Hey, why did you do it this way? What happened? Oh, well, they couldn't qualify for this. So I had to sell them an accidental death benefit instead of a hospital benefits. Oh, okay, gotcha. So it helps me as a leader work with folks if I know what it is that they're doing. Now, I get tons of other reports that tells me everything under the sun. But if this is sent out to a client, I'm copying on it every time. I don't have to rely on the other reports. I always have this. Yes, Molly. So um, I noticed that it says children health life insurance per child. So let's say... For instance, one thousand um, dollars. Would you put? And this person had two kids. Um, would you put two thousand, or would you put one thousand and put parentheses on? You put whatever you want in there. Kids. However, you want to articulate that to the client. You can put. These are edible fields. It doesn't matter what I put in here, right? You can put whatever you want. So if you have multiple okay. children, you want to break it down that way, you can break it down that way. Basically, you're okay. just giving, because here's what happens. Once you sell something, the client never gets, sorry, the client only receives all their policy information six to eight weeks after 
you've talked with them because it has to go through the underwriting process. So if you send them this summary sheet, then they know exactly I'm paying this amount of money and this is what I got for it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. I just was like, okay, per child, does that mean? But you answered it. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So you would fill us out. We're going to go through this later and what all this means. So I'm just giving you the overview of it now. So we've talked about uh, the new agent packet, the training syllabus, the rubric. Um, this is what your uh, burial information looks like when you're talking to a client. Actually, if I can get it to work. So, okay, so I, there it is, the burial and will kit. I give it to you as a PDF so that you have access to it. It's embedded within your HP Pro, but if HP Pro doesn't work for some reason, now you've got the actual information right here that you can talk to. And, and you guys can take a look at this. This is everything that you're going to be going over when we train you how to do this. And it's everything you go over with every single client. There's the, you know, there's all that information. Uh, the last one is the actual presentation. This is what you do every single time. So A1 in the opening, talk about what they're doing, what they've done. Build rapport. Hey, my name is Sam, I'm the director of American Income, the Veterans Division of American Income Life. We're the company that handles permanent benefits for all the VSOs across the country. Then we ask, hey, has there been the first time someone is, a, you know, is this the first time someone's met with you virtually in person? And I'm going to go through this and teach you and tell you why we ask the questions that we do and why we ask them when we ask them. Okay. Yellow is decision point. If it's a PAVET, you say that. If it's a response card, you say this. Hey, thank you for service to our country. Then you show the copy of the letter and then you turn your camera off. All of you have your cameras on now, right? Why do you think I want you to turn your camera off when you talk to your clients? So they can pay attention to the presentation and not you. That's a very good one. It's not the number one reason, but it's certainly up there. Let me ask it a different way. How many people think I turn my camera off when I talk to a client? I think Anybody? you will, would, um, uh, mm -hmm. mostly, so you think I would? what you think I would turn it off, right? Yes, because then so you don't have to give me the reason. No, no, don't you don't give me the reason. So I just want to know if you think I turn it off. So you would think I turn it off. Sherry, you think I turn it off, right? Well, I would actually think because of your experience and all of the memorization that you've had to do, you, right probably would have the option of leaving your camera on uh, whereas we would be talking from a script. And so that wouldn't be appropriate perfect. for our camera to be on. That's exactly where we're going. When you see Ashley Rust or someone else who's a top hitter and give a presentation to a client, they never turn their camera off. They have their script up so they can refer back to it. And every one of them will tell you, yeah, I have my script up. But they've done this so well and for so long that for them, they know where to go every step of the way. Even me, I might know where to go every step of the way. I'll still have my script available to me. The reason we have new hires like yourself turn the script off, particularly in your very first sit, is what we call fear spikes. Fear spikes happen when we know we're anticipating something and we're right about to do it and our fear starts to spike and go up. When your fear goes up, what happens to you? You tend to get a little, not distracted, but you're trying to do everything all at once, right? You're trying to follow here, you're trying to follow there, you're trying to get Zoom to work, all these other things, right? So you have fear spikes. If your camera is off, am I gonna know that you're having a fear spike? No. If your camera's off, am I gonna know you're doing this? Well, thank you for your service to our country. I don't think our veterans hear that enough. So again, thank you. What I'm going to do now is share my screen with you. This is the copy of the letter that you received. The VSOs got together. and up. See, if I'm watching you and you're over here doing that, you're not paying attention to me. Now I'm going to pay attention to you. Your confidence goes down. Your credibility goes down, right? But if I turn this off and do exactly the same thing, hey, so I turn my camera off and walk through this. You're looking at my screen. This is a copy of the letter that you received. The VSOs got together and noticed there were some common concerns shared by all the veterans. Number one, they want to do this, that, or the other. Do you see the difference? 
you're one, you're no longer looking at my video, you're looking at what I'm sharing. And two, you're not paying attention to whether I'm reading or whether I'm just speaking extemporaneously, right off the cuff. So for all new hires, it is a requirement. It is a requirement that you turn your camera off. Now, when you're released and you go to your upline, your upline may say, no, no, we want the camera on all the time. We want you to connect with your client. That's fine. If that's what they want you to do, I don't have a problem with that. But through this course, and when you do your rubric, I, you have to turn the camera off. Because if you don't, I've had students that fail because their essays will say, well, I paid attention to you the whole time and you read the thing and I didn't think you were doing very good. Whether you did well or not, that's the perception. So get rid of that perception by killing your camera. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? So you can go through this script. You can look at everything here. Again, yellow is going to be decision points. You go through this entire script all the way, all the way until you get to here. And there's going to be places in here where you don't do certain things because of what you're selling. But when you get down to here, this is the budget question. You get down to closing right there. You press the benefit summary, and then you're going to say, hey, do you like what, do you want to do what most of the veterans do and go with the recommended program? Or do you want to try to qualify for an enhanced program? That's it. That's the script to get all the way through. If they tell you, nope, then you have to overcome objections. If they tell you, yes, you now have a sale and now you got to get through the process of working with their application to get it done for them. So this is the script that everybody has to do when they do their presentation rubric. There's a lot there. You don't have to memorize it all, but you are going to have to go through the entire thing with me, with each other, and with your trainer in order to get out of this class. And that is the last attachment, I believe, except for screen, uh, sorry, phone script rebuttals. Hey, can't you just email it to me? Yeah, I already know my benefits. I don't need this. I don't have time right now. I don't have the internet. I don't remember this. I just don't want to do this. Why does my spouse have to be there? We tell you things that you can say to overcome those objections. Again, all of this is attached to the email that I sent you. Now, we're about wrapped up. Tracy Hall. What I saw you today. Yes, 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 I'm here. I'm Don't here, worry. I'm here. What did I sell you today, Tracy? What did you sell me today? The fact that yes. you know you know what you're talking about, the process works, and if we follow your process, that we're going to do well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's what I sold you. That's great. Emily Johnson, what did I sell you today? You sold me the ability to know that I can gain the confidence to be able to sell this product. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have single mothers, we have mothers with multiple children, we have single fathers, we have folks that have uh, extended families, small families, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everybody has the ability to do this. It's just a question of your commitment. So what we're going to ascertain throughout the next two weeks is what level of commitment are you at? And then hopefully I can shift that commitment to affirmation. David Fulfer, what did the class sell me today? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm real excited. I think um, you've already started building confidence in all of us and that uh, we can do this. Um, um, I think uh, to reiterate what you were saying about the scripts, maybe printing them out and, you know, mm -hmm. being kind of like that, that's our go-to cliff notes all the time every day and then focusing on the script and reading through it and trying to always go back to the script after those objections, just going right back to it and mm -hmm. not getting tripped up on the objections. Yep. So we'll learn together and discover how to weave with the client, but always come right back. Weave mm -hmm. and then come right back, right? We don't want to be dissuaded from what we're there to do, which is take care of that client and then obviously get paid in the process. Lester what did I get sold by the class? Um, a means, a method, uh, a process of how to be successful uh, here in the next two weeks to prepare us uh, to the best of our abilities to um, help 
veterans out and be successful at the same time. Uh, yeah. a, a trade of monies with benefits. What did the class sell to me? Class sold to you, I think, uh, with everybody um, engaging is that uh, there is a level of commitment here from each of us um, that we are interested, that uh, we are sticking around, that uh, we are excited to get started and to take this, not a first step anymore since we got our license, but the next step to um, get in and get our hands dirty and start uh, the process of becoming successful. Awesome. Yep, I think uh, that's probably what I got. You all did sell me that we need to practice how to unmute, right? You did <laughs> practice. Uh, one of the things that we're going to learn how to do is bring the thunder. That's my sales phrase I use all the time, which is just this omniscient thing that just says you're bringing it. Every day I want you to bring it. Whether you're bringing it to me, whether you're bringing it to your clients, to your upline, bring it. Everything I want to instill in you ultimately boils down to control. Controlling yourself, controlling your client, controlling your engagement, controlling your upline. And I don't mean telling them what to do. I'm saying if you have a question for your upline, they haven't responded to you. This is your career. This is your job. Make sure they respond to you. They're going to get paid off you. The least they can do is respond, give you what you need to win. Right? So I want to thank each and every one of you for, one, taking the leap of faith by joining us today, taking the leap of faith by joining American Income, and more importantly, taking the leap of faith in yourself, because all of you can do this. There's not one person that I've heard talk on the phone except maybe, well, no, nobody. Everybody can do this, right? Everybody has the ability to do this. You're all here. Most of us have got our license or we're about to get it. I'm confident that I probably want each one of you on my team because I think you can all make a pretty good amount of money and take care of a lot of veterans in the process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick around after I stop the recording uh, for any questions that anybody might have. I'm going to let your upline know that you're available at 1.30 to uh, do whatever it is that they want you to do. Last questions for Patrick. How many phone calls do I expect you to make before the end of the course? So you, you would want us to make 300 calls or exactly. dials, I believe, and then dials. 30 presentations. Oh, oh, you got it. You got it. You got the calls. Only answer the question that's asked, my friend. Emily Johnson, how many presentations do I want you to observe? Sorry, computer's not. Computer was that's okay. How many? I have to speak to at least 50% of those people. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Maybe I misspoke. How many presentations do I want you to either write along or observe before the end of the course? Oh, four a week or four? The total number is 30. 30. Yep, 30. 300 calls, 300 dials, 30 presentations or write alongs, okay? Hey, again, thanks to all of you. I appreciate it. You've got my information. If you have any problems with your upline in terms of getting access to them or whatever, uh, let me know if any of you don't have access to eApp or to HP Pro or something like that. When you answer the questions, let your upline know they can help you achieve that. If you do not have your license, you will not have a login to eApp yet. That's okay. I'm going to give you a training login. But all of us should have a login to HP Pro. It should be ours. And if for whatever reason we don't have ours, your upline should give you theirs. George, you have a question for me. How do you get a hold of the upline? Uh, who's your upline? Um, Brenna. Brenna, I will tell you what. You stick around with me. We'll call Brenna together because I know her very well. All okay? Right. And I'll give you her number. All right. Any other questions for our recording? If not, I'm going to go ahead and stop it now. And like I said, I'll stick around for a little bit. But, hey, thanks to all of you for joining today. Okay? Mm -hmm.